Okay, so I'll get to the meeting. So uh, welcome everyone. This is meeting number five. It's Monday, May 10th, 2021. Uh, we're starting early at 6 p.m. Uh, this is uh, a note to members of the public that due to the efforts to contain the spread of COVID-19 and to protect all individuals, the council chambers will not be open to the public to attend council meetings until further notice. The public may submit comments for matters that are on the agenda or request to attend a virtual meeting as attendees by emailing jdyson at westlincoln.ca by the Monday before uh, by sorry Monday before the meeting at 4:30 p.m. Email comments submitted will be considered as public information and read into the pub, uh, public record. The meeting will be recorded and available on the township website within 48 hours of the meeting, unless otherwise noted. And in most situations, I've noticed it's been up probably in about six to eight hours after the meeting, which is fantastic. Um, I'm Chair Council O'Reilly. And this is the Planning, Building, Environmental Committee agenda. Uh, do oh, so. I already read that part. Da, 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 da. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to ask if there's any disclosure of pecuniary conflict of interest or not. Not nope. seeing any. Um, right now, under confidential matters, we have a recommendation that the next portion of this meeting be closed to the public to consider following the following pursuance of Section 239.2 of the Municipal Act, 2001, um, re legal enforcement matter uh, testimonial device um, in the former township of Gainesville and now township of West Lincoln, which is a verbal update. Applicable closed session exemptions are litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board or the security of the property of the municipal or local board and advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. Um, do I have a mover? Mayor Bilsma and Councillor um, Braderick, um, I guess at this point, all those in favor? All right, so that carries. And so now we're in close and for those who've joined us, we'll be back shortly. Uh, the committee now resumes in open session of the hour of 628. Uh, have item P5721, Director of Planning and Building, Brian Treble, re-legal enforcement matter, testimony devised in the former township of Gainesville, now township of West Lincoln, verbal update. So I don't believe um, we need anything for that, but I do believe I need a motion to come out of, to go into open session, right? So if I can get somebody to move that. So Councilor Yonker and Councilor Trombetta, and then all those in favor. Okay, so we're now in open session. And uh, yeah, so now moving forward, Again, sorry, I'm just trying to, um, okay, so I have in section four, uh, again, disclosure of any pecuniary interest and or conflict of interest, not seeing any or hearing any. So now we have our public meeting uh, tonight under 5.1, uh, 629, although we say it's gonna start at 6.30, we're about a minute ahead of the game here, uh, zoning bylaw amendment for Carlton. And I'm gonna apologize if for the, probably saying this name wrong, but, uh, I think from what I was trying to practice earlier, it's uh, Kamukana Nova, sorry, Kamukana Nova. Apologize, I probably butchered that, terribly sorry. Uh, file number 1601-004-21. Uh, um, Re-owner of the property located at 6696 Camborough Road, part one of 30R-3892 concession BF part F, uh, lot two and four, file number 1601-004-21. So that's gonna be our public meeting. And as I bring up my other window here, um, just to kind of remind those who are um, unfamiliar with this, so that this is a public meeting to consider a zoning bylaw amendment application submitted by um, the applicants and at the location of 6696 Camborough Road, file number 1601-004-21. Um, the Planning Act requires in Section 3412 that before passing a zoning bylaw amendment, Council must hold at least one public meeting for the purpose of informing the public in respect of the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. The purpose of the public meeting is to receive comments and answer questions from the public regarding this zoning bylaw amendment submitted by Michael and uh, as a Gill. Um, I'm not going to say the last name again. I apologize. We stress that at this point, no decision has been made on the proposed zoning bylaw amendment and any comments received will be taken into account by council and their consideration. Um, the Planning Act also requires in section 3414.2 that council advise the public that if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the Township of West Lincoln by the time the bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the Township of West Lincoln to the municipal Ontario Municipal Board. 
So at this point, I'm going to ask the deputy clerk to please advise the method and dates by which notice was given to the public. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Proper notice was given by way of mail distribution distribution to all neighbors within 120 meters of the subject property, as well as notice provided to the clerk of the township of Waynefleet. A yellow notice sign was also posted on the subject property. Excellent, thank you. Uh, I guess at this point, is, there, is the applicant or their authorized agent present and able to speak to this application? I'm gonna take a quick look around the room here. I think through you, uh... Chair Riley, that's uh, the- Oh, I jumped, planner. I jumped the gun. My apologies, newbie, geez. Okay, sorry. So I'm gonna ask uh, our planner, Gary Borma, to please explain the purpose and reason for the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. Thank you. An application for a zoning bylaw amendment and site plan has been made by Mr. Stephen Rivers of South Coast Consulting on behalf of the property owners of 6696 Canberra Road. I will not try to pronounce the names either. 6696 Canberra Road is located on the south side of Canberra Road, abutting the Welland River near the border, the township border of the township of Waynefleet, uh, near the hamlet of Addercliff. It is 8.3 hectares in size and has a single attached dwelling and some accessory buildings and structures. The applications being rezoning and site plan have been made to permit the property to have an on-farm diversified use, uh, which is an agritourism type use, which includes the short-term accommodations within yurts, which are a tent-like building or structure. And that would be in relation to an agricultural activity on the property, which they have shown in their planning justification report as being uh, gardening to produce produce and various types of livestock. The subject property is located within the good general agricultural area of the township's official plan and is zoned agricultural, environmental conservation, and environmental protection. The township zoning bylaw only permits on-farm diversified uses, including these agritourism type uses on agriculturally zoned lots with a minimum lot area of 10 hectares. The app, these applications have been brought forward to address an ongoing bylaw enforcement matter. The applicants have submitted a planning justification report to show how this proposed development is in alignment with the applicable planning policy. And the applicants have also submitted a site plan application, which will be considered more fully in a future report to committee, uh, as this public meeting is more concerned with the zoning amendment. The application was circulated to the public and to agencies as well as internal departments. At this time, the Niagara region has provided comments and has no objection. However, they wish to review the site plan in greater detail. The Conservation Authority, the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority has also submitted comments. However, they were a little bit too late to get into this report, uh, but they have no objection, but they also have identified several of the items that would need a conservation authority work permit, as well as wish to review the site plan in more detail as well. Several members of the public have also provided comment on this application uh, with regards to privacy concerns and impacts to wildlife and the natural environment. These comments have been attached to the planning report that's later on this agenda and will be fully reviewed by staff prior to any recommendation pr presented. Uh, and I just want to once again remind the, the members of the public because I believe there are a couple on this meeting that uh, no decision has been made and we will fully review all of your comments in a future planning report. Uh, our final point is that staff in consultation with the Township Septic Inspector, Mr. Lyle Killens have rec uh, recommended in the recommendation report later on in the agenda, the requirement for the applicants to provide some type of private servicing plan. Uh, a plan was not provided, but was required as part of the pre-consultation meeting. And as there's human habitation within the yurts combined with the agricultural activities on the property, uh, running water for hand washing uh, was determined essential. Uh, planning staff are recommending that the applicant provide a private servicing plan to the satisfaction of the Township of West Lincoln prior to um, any future recommendation report being presented and 
if there are any members of the public wishing to speak tonight, then we will also be taking all their comments under further consideration. Um, the applicant's agent, Mr. Stephen Rivers, did say he was going to attend, but I'm looking at the screen and I did not see him at this moment, and I'm not sure if he is on the call or not. I do see one of the applicants. Uh, their hand actually just went up, so I will go to them um, momentarily once you're ready. Oh, assuming you're ready now. Yes, sorry, that's it for me. Thank you. That's okay. So I'll, uh, let me just do this click here. So we were just bringing someone over and uh, it, I'm going to say, is it Azigil? Uh, hi, yeah, it's uh, Azigil and Michael here. Um, okay. We're just for Stephen to join in. He's emailed me for the link to the meeting, just a short okay. time before, so he should be online very, very short. Okay. Is it, is it, sorry, is it standard that we don't see everybody? We only see the councillors? That's correct. Yeah, there'll be people that are in attendees. They're, uh, they won't be part of the screen here, so you'll just be talking to us. Okay, thanks. But they'll be able to hear you still. Right. So, Michael, are you prepared to, to speak at all to this? Stephen should be joining us extremely shortly. Um, I've just e emailed him the link, so he should be, he's supposed to be our um, fronting the meeting on our behalf. So I don't know if he did receive a meeting invite from the township or he's maybe missed. Okay. okay. I think at this point, um, we'll give Stephen a, a couple minutes here. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll move on to members of the, uh, the gallery here just to keep the meeting going because we've got a lengthy meeting tonight. Uh, and then if Stephen shows, then we can, we'll bring him back into this. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to ask if there are any oral or written submissions from anyone present on the Zoom meeting regarding this zoning, this proposed zoning bylaw amendment. I'd like to stress that this may be the only public meeting held with respect to this application. Therefore, if any members of the public that are in attendance at this Zoom meeting would like to make their comments or provide a written comment, they should do so now by using one of the two options. If you're using a computer or smartphone, you're going to raise your hand. Um, it's a control that can be found in the Zoom options listed uh, below. If you're on a landline phone, which I don't think I saw any, but just in case there is somebody there, you will notify, you'll be pushing star nine and that will notify staff that you have raised your hand as well. Once you've been acknowledged to speak, uh, please unmute your microphone. It is important that you provide your comments now. And if you do not, uh, and if you have not done so already in writing or verbally as LPAP may not consider comments made during any other council in our committee meeting. Also, anyone wishing to speak are required to unmute the microphone to talk. And then once they're finished, we do ask that you remute your microphone so we don't hear all the noise in the background. And prior to speaking, we do ask that you put you provide your name and your address for the record. So at this point, uh, to anybody who's joining us uh, in the gallery, if you would like to speak, um, please let us know by raising your virtual hand and we will permit you to speak. And if not, not a worry. So I'll give everybody maybe another 10 or 15 seconds here. I see one person, I see an Alan. Nope, yeah, okay, we got a couple of people. So I'll, I'm gonna go to Alan first. Okay, Alan, you can unmute your, your uh, microphone there and you, the floor is yours. Yeah, okay, now you can talk. Yeah, we just wanna know if there's been any acknowledgement of the, the, the uh, flood land, flood potential in that lower part of that land over there. Okay, so just just to kind of help get you understand, no 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 real investigating has gone yet. Right now, this is a chance for you to express some any concerns or feedback. Uh, staff will review that. So if that is a matter that you would like staff to consider, then I would suggest that that question be asked them to include that in their report. This is more of a fact finding mission, and for us, we're just kind of taking that input, and then staff will prepare a report later at a future meeting and uh, and present those findings. Then another thing I'd like to be, uh, is there is there a uh, a noise curfew, like we heard, uh, you know, just recently we heard uh, two o'clock in the morning, they were having a party over there in one of those yurks. Uh, I wondered if, if there's, if there is a, a noise uh, a time when uh, it's supposed to be quiet. Okay, great question. Uh, Garrett, are you aware of if there's anything currently in place or is that something that will be re uh, considered through the, uh, the process? For you, uh, I think there, uh, the township does have a noise bylaw. I'm not sure how it would uh, apply in this situation, but we will, I see Brian's also joined, so he might have something to add, but uh, we will take that back and review further as well. We used to actually have a, quite a barrier 
of trees uh, that give us some privacy. But this, the other side, there's the, all the ash trees have died on our side and on the other side. Uh, so it's that property is, you know, the, I'm, I'm more concerned about straight across from me, but I don't, I don't see, see them going to do anything down, down there. Up, up where they got those, uh, up near to the house, it's not a problem for me. I'm, I'm not that concerned of up there, but at the bottom end, uh, that's where we are. Okay. Thank you for that. Is there anything else, Alan? I, another thing too is uh, <clears throat> that the, the, the tax structure is uh, would, like, would this be a tax as a, as, as on agriculture or uh, tourism or what does that cha change the tax structure to to change this uh, uh, zoning? Um, great question. I don't know if we can even answer that. Maybe we can. I'll go to the director of planning, uh, Brian Treble, if you can maybe weigh in here. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I can answer a little bit, but I'll start by qualifying that I'm not an expert in any way with, with the taxes and, and the treasurer can uh, assist staff in putting a response together for the recommendation report. But um, my understanding is that taxes are based on the use of the land. So if the minister uh, sorry, if the Municipal Property Assessment Corporation, MPAC, is of the opinion that this use is something other than agriculture, then they will presumably tax it accordingly. Um, and that's regardless of the zoning we may put in play because the, the taxation is based on use. And, and if I may, Mr. Chair, um, just back to the noise bylaw, Mr. Burma was correct. There is a noise bylaw in the township. And I believe in this case, it would apply to say that between 11 p.m and 7 a.m. Uh, there should be no noise or noise kept to a minimum. And I believe that is actually 9 a.m. when it comes to Sunday mornings. Thank you. And I, I guess just to clarify, I wasn't sure how much of it changed out in the rural area. So that's good to hear. So hopefully that uh, puts Alan's mind to ease there. Alan, anything else or are we good? That's, a, that's enough. Awesome. Enough. Thank, you. Thank you so much for your comments, Alan. All right, I see that uh, I think Stephen had shown back up, so we'll go back to Stephen. And uh, Stephen, whenever you're ready, you can unmute your mic and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm a professional planner. I'm uh, working on behalf of the uh, the applicants on this, uh, this project to prepare the planning justification report. Uh, I don't know if this is the appropriate time for me to provide some responses to the public comments or if uh, uh, if there are other members of the public who perhaps should go go first so I can hear their concerns. So normally we actually usually have you go first. Uh, you're also welcome to respond after the fact should we have questions. But again, keep in mind, this isn't uh, um, a meeting for you to answer their questions as much as it is for us to gain information from you. And then from there, staff will figure out the process. If there's questions they have, they can seek that through you. So I would suggest that if you're here to represent um, the applicant, then maybe just go forward with whatever presentation you have and we can figure out the rest if we did get hung up on a question or two. Okay, uh, I sent Garrett some, uh, some slides I'd like to, sh to share with you as well. Uh, hopefully we can do that. Uh, at this point, uh, you know the public has con had concerns about the uh, the view, and I think as as Alan just talked about uh, looking across the river, uh, I'm I'm sure the uh, the planners will support uh, my contention that view a view is not a public uh, uh, concern as far as the planning act is concerned. Uh, certainly, uh, you know people have that issue. I've had to deal with my mother and her concern about losing her view, uh, but. Uh, you know, that is not a not a planning issue, uh, and uh, really not something that that uh, the planners deal with. Secondly, was the there was a comment about a hiking trail or a bicycle path. Uh, certainly, none of those are proposed as part of this application. Uh, I just I think that the uh, the people who commented on those uh, were con uh, confusing the uh, regional. Uh, bicycle uh, routes that are shown on the uh, uh, the planning justification report with something that, that uh, may or may not well certainly isn't being proposed by uh, by these applicants uh, on the property. 
Uh, Alan also mentioned the trees for the visual screen. I don't know uh, if uh, Garrett can bring up uh, the uh, the first uh, riverbank vegetation uh, slide that I I sent to him. So what we're what we're looking at here is a uh, uh, Google Earth uh, slide of the uh, of the riverbank. Uh, certainly, uh, you know there have been die off of the ash trees, but. I think from the from the slide, it's pretty obvious that there's a substantial uh, vegetation along the uh, along the riverbank, uh, so, and certainly uh, on the um, on the applicant side. Uh, the the other issue that uh, <coughs> that Alan had mentioned was flooding uh, in the uh, uh, site plan that is prepared. Uh, we've been very careful to ensure that uh, none of the development and, and certainly the conservation authority has has provided us with uh, with uh, issue with comments that uh, we're, everything is going to occur outside the floodplain. So we've mapped the uh, the one on one hundred year flood line and uh, the area that we're looking at for the uh, proposal for the location year is is above the above the flood line. Uh, the privacy issue uh, and and the the uh, uh, the sound noise from parties. Uh, I spoke with the client, uh, both at the owners. Uh, the the instance that that Alan was talking about was the owners themselves. Uh, it wasn't somebody from from the yurts. And uh, as a as a matter of fact, the the uh, the owners have a. Uh, a List of, of issues that are list of, of uh, criteria for people using the the, uh, the property. One of them is that uh, being respectful and no noise after ten o'clock. So those those are kinds of things that uh, uh, most most operators of these kinds of, of facilities are, are looking forward to. The the users uh, or the people that are attending, for the most part, are coming out of the city. And they're looking for, to get away from the, the noise and hustle and bustle of the city to something quiet. So uh, certainly uh, the owners concur with, with Alan and the issue, with the issue of noise. But then if they, uh, we've already heard that they can hear uh, the boys at, the, uh, at the, the school up the road. So noise is noise. It, it's there, it's existing already uh, and we're looking at something that's not going to add substantially to to the uh, to the noise in the area. Um, the other one was the uh, there was concern about sewage treatment. Uh, certainly, any uh, any uh, facilities on the site will have to meet the Ontario Building Code, and uh, I suspect we'll be talking at at, uh, at some some length in in the very near future with the uh, with the building. Uh, chief building official, but what is required, and, and uh, how to how to implement that, how to put it in place, and the other concern was uh, light pollution from greenhouses. Uh, greenhouses that are being proposed are hoop greenhouses, uh, that really to extend the growing season. There will be no lights in them, no uh, uh, no electricity to them. So those are some of the concerns that uh, the uh, written. Uh, with the written comments. Hopefully I've addressed them uh, adequately, but I'm certainly happy to try uh, uh, answer any of council's questions. Excellent, thank you, Stephen. Appreciate that. So you just hang tight and we'll let you know if we have anything else. Uh, before I, I move on, actually, Alan, if you're still there, I, I forgot to ask you for your address. We need to have it for the public record in order to take your information. So Alan, if you can unmute yourself again and just clarify yeah. um, your residency, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. 75646 Reason Road 45. Excellent. Thank you so much, sir. All right. So moving forward, I'm going to see if there's any other hands that are raised. And I have a Laura Thompson. So Laura, I'm going to permit you to speak here. So just give one second. Oh, oh there you go. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. So I'm going to ask you to start by st just stating your, your name as well as your uh, your address for record. Yeah, awesome. Laura Thompson and 48 Sarah Crescent. 
Awesome. Thank you, Laura. You can speak. No problem. Awesome. And I have a three week old here nursing. So if you hear some background noise, my oh, apologies. No worries. Um, yeah, everyone's in the same boat these days. Um, so I saw the the recent PDF that was sent out. Um, and it, I think a lot of the um, comments that I previously had were addressed in that. The I saw in the PDF something about that there wouldn't be any construction going through our current subdivision um, or any of the construction vehicles that because there would be alternative access routes. Um, there wouldn't be any need to go through the subdivision. So I think as long as everyone's on the same page for that, or there's some way of um, enforcing that or following that through, that's great. So one question, sorry. Hold on. So I, Laura, just to confirm, uh, I, I think you're actually speaking about a different matter. Um, you're speaking about a matter that might be coming up later. This is specifically uh, a public meeting for the, uh, the zoning bylaw amendment of 6696 Canberra Road. Okay. Yep. It is a different one. So is it later I, on this? Yeah. Morning, so or what's going to happen is in a few, in a few moments, we're going to have requests to address items on the agenda. Yeah. And during that point, that point, you're going to, um, you're going to bring those concerns up then. Okay. Awesome. That sounds great. Sorry about that. No, nope, no, nope, that's completely understandable. Don't worry about it. All right. Um, I'm just going to go back through here, see if there's anybody else. Okay. So, all right. Not seeing any other hands. I'm gonna move forward to members of the committee. Let me just make sure I have everybody muted here. Perfect, okay. So do any members of committee have any oral written submissions on the proposed zoning bylaw amendment? Please note that members of committee must make their comments now as LPAP may not consider comments made at any other committee or council meeting. Any member of council wishing to speak are required to unmute their microphone to talk. And once they're finished, we are gonna ask you to mute your microphone again. So in case someone's hands came out while I was reading, I see Councillor Ganan and Councillor Rayner, you'll be next. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to Mr. Rivers. Um, I read the re justification report and there were a couple of things in there that um, before you were on the call were actually uh, my questions that were cleared up in Mr. Borama's uh, presentation regarding this case. And that is uh, looking at some kind of uh, a private system for sewage. As I read the justification report over and over and over through it, it indicated that if this was outside of the urban area, that there needs to be something. So I was very, very concerned about um, not so much the porta potties, but the idea of what we were going to do about hand washing if this was to go through. Um, so mentioning hand washing, there is uh, already um, something in the report about sinks in the two existing yurts. And so I'm wondering, um, A, what kind of sink that they are uh, based on what we have, because it talked about sinks and bottled water. And secondly, if they have water of some sort, where is that water going? So that's the part for Mr. Rivers right now, please. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, to, to Councillor Gannon. Uh, I'm gonna have to defer to the, uh, to the uh, to the applicant himself on this one. I, I know he's uh, online and, and listening. Uh, I haven't certainly been in, into the yurts to see what's what's there. And uh, our, uh, I think our issue with the, uh, the water supply and the, uh, uh, the treatment of sewage is, yeah, we're, we're certainly want to move forward with whatever's required by the Ontario Building Code. Uh, but we're looking to uh, get some direction from uh, your chief building official as to what the standards have to be to be satisfied. And uh, the, uh, the planning report uh, from your staff mentions the uh, uh, staff, staff comments in, uh, in uh, Annex 4 or Appendix 4 of the report, but there's nothing there from the chief building official. So we're looking for that uh, that direction from the CBO on what's required and, and how to and what's necessary to proceed. Okay, so thank you for that. And I do know that you missed that part of the meeting. So you will find out that I'm sure afterwards. But at right now, this came to us because of a complaint, which means there are two existing yurts that have been rented out already for people's use. And I'm wondering what they are using now. So perhaps that needs to go to the owner, as you've said, Mr. Rivers. 
Uh, uh, Michael Carlton speaking here. So presently we provide um, clean water that comes from home hardware in a five gallon pail. Uh, so it's a clean sanitized five gallon jug, um, which many people use in this region for their own normal water. So every guest gets a brand new sterilized bottle from home hardware. Um, we then provide a jug or a it's almost like a cocktail um, glass jar that is up to a gallon of water. You simply press a valve, um, wash your hands, it drains into a bucket. The bucket is disposed of along with the porta potty. When the subcontractor comes and cleans the Halcro porta potty, they, they remove all grey water from site. That's hand washing, dish washing, and, and the grey water from the, from the porta potty that's actually already here. Okay, thank you, Michael. I wondered how in the world that could happen, but uh, obviously you have some kind of a plan um, that will need to be developed further if you're going to expand this this project further, I'm sure. We have no um, issue in, in expanding, we just need direction on that, 100%. We're very okay, willing to. So, so in terms of add-on diversification for farmer, um, I also agree, this is a great idea if you get it right, but obviously there are a few things that still need to be in place. Um, so one of them talks about it being based on existing farming and trying to supplement that farming to make it sustainable and viable. So I'm wondering what kind of farming is actually going on on the property right now, please? So presently we have 50 pear trees, a number of apple trees, so um, we are harvesting those. We have just today spent all day in the field laying out our um, vegetation beds. We are running three foot beds um, and close to the creek, which is where the most fertile soil is. We have our plants propagating in the greenhouse on the property. We plan to sell to people who come to the yurts. We also plan to, to sell from a small market stall at the farm. Um, we have 10 acres of hay, we have alpacas, we have goats, we will be shortly getting some beef cattle for our personal consumption. Uh, we have meat chickens that are um, um, processed professionally by um, a, a slaughterhouse, which is close to Smithville, I believe. I can't remember the name of it. Um, we have honey jars for sale right now. We have uh, four beehives um, on the property. So we are slowly learning and we are developing the farm as we go and we, we're hoping to basically provide good quality organic fruit and vegetables to people from the earth and the local community. Okay, thank you. That's all, Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I'll go to Councillor Rayner. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to, uh, to uh, Mr. Borma. Um, did you not say that uh, in order to do this, our zoning says that it's got to be 10, hacre, uh, 10 hectares, and this is 8.1. Am I correct? Uh, th through the chair, that is correct. The, uh, the zoning bylaw requires for an on-farm diversified use that the, the lot have a minimum lot area of 10 hectares to be considered. Okay, but we're considering it. Um, when we shouldn't be considering it because it doesn't meet the requirements. Um, we just went through confidential on things uh, that, and now we're going through this, which is basically the same thing in open saying we have rules and um, these are the rules. You've got to be 10 hectares or more. It's 8.1, sorry, you didn't make it. It's like if you want a house and you've got three quarters of a hectare on, or three quarters of an acre, I'm sorry, it's not big enough, you can't have a house. Um, why are we pursuing this when it doesn't meet the minimum requirements of the township? Yeah, through the chair and Brian, please fill in if I miss anything. But um, uh, as with many things, anyone can make an application to amend what the township has as a, a zoning bylaw um, or in the zoning bylaw. And so they have gone through the process to apply for an amendment to the zoning bylaw. And the, the 10 hectares is just a standard number that is applied across the township. And in some cases, the 10 hectares may not be suitable for particular lots. Um, so although there's no flexibility in the zoning bylaw, landowners do have the ability to apply for um, an amendment to the zoning bylaw if they feel that there is an appropriate fit with um, their proposed use on this particular property. All right, there's, 
because there has been some uh, normally if we have applications on this usually there's nothing from the conservation authority there's nothing from the region there's nothing from our mr killens there's everything's clean everybody seems to have a bit of concern uh and then there was the mention from alan that at two o'clock in the morning there was a lot of noise um and obviously it was very disturbing to him and then the planner says that uh, that people come in the city, they want to go out in the country and they want things to be quiet. Some of them do. Some of them come out with dirt bikes and want to go the opposite direction. Uh, but in this particular case, um, it was the owners uh, that were making the noise. And yet they were going to set the rules at 10 o'clock. There should be no noise. Somehow that conflicts to me. Uh, don't do as I do, do as I say. Um, it doesn't reflect well, plus um, it's also COVID time. So you're wondering, it's awful loud. You just two people having a party or is there more than that going on out there? Uh, we shouldn't be hearing a lot of noise and things about people yelling and drinking at two in the morning with COVID. And uh, the second of all, you're trying to establish credibility in the neighborhood for your business. And yet you're ticking off your neighbors at two o'clock in the morning and telling them that the people you're bringing in here aren't going to do that. So counselor, Somehow, to my me. counselor, one second. I just want to make it very clear that you're you're basing this statement on allegations. Okay, so just be tread very carefully, please. Okay. Well, I'm only I can only go, uh, Mr. Chair, by what was said by the people who were here speaking on behalf, and, and I I'm I not going to turn around and tell the gentleman he's a liar. Um, if he's there saying that it was annoying, I would assume he didn't bring this out of the blue, and it really did happen. Um, so there's just a number of issues with regards to this um, that don't add up to me. Um, so I will not be, be supporting this based on those circumstances. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Any other members of committee uh, have any other questions or comments? All right. Not seeing any. Let me just get my spot back here. Uh, where'd I go? Yeah, sorry. Mr. Oh, Chair? Counselor, sorry, Councillor Yonker, go ahead. Yeah, to uh, through you to, um, I believe it would be their planner. Their um, I'm, his, his name is escaping me, but Steve on Herbert. the presentation, yes, on that presentation with uh, on the on page forty six of the document with one hundred and twenty three of them, um, I tried to zoom in on what they're proposing, and I I can't I'm not understanding some of the stuff that's in there. I can't read it. Um, there's a proposed in on that map. There's a proposed uh, yurts location. I'm guessing there's the proposal to have the five greenhouses along the railroad, um, the former Toronto, Hamilton, and Buffalo Railroad. And then there's a a, a, a big gray area or, or in that proposed yurts location that's uh, hashed marked out. There's a there's a part that's uh, clear rectangle so i was just kind of wondering what what that was and then also um i guess there's a couple yurts already existing and they're shown beside that to the left of that and i was just wondering if you could maybe just explain what in that is in that um blank triangle on that map Okay, so Stephen, um, if you're able to unmute there and it respond, that'd be great. Yeah, through uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to uh, to the councillor, I'm scrolling through my document to find the uh, uh, the um, image. Uh, so give me a couple seconds until I get there. Yeah, no, no, no problem. Yeah, page forty six of that document, I believe that you shared with us, uh, with the township. Okay, getting there. Yeah, Hi, sorry, is it possible that I may interject at this point? Yes. Yeah. To answer his question. Uh, yeah, to answer this question, yeah. Yes, you can. Okay, so um, in the process of discussing the site plan with our subcontractor working on our behalf, I actually asked the, the um, the draftman or the, the, the CAD operator for the company to place the five greenhouses where I have actually placed the square box that you are referring to. So in actual fact, the greenhouses shouldn't be run parallel alongside where the train line is, it should be somewhere around um, where I placed the square box. 
So that clear square box, I, I simply asked the, yes. the contractor to move those greenhouses into or around that vicinity. Does that answer your question, Councillor? Okay. Yes, it does. Yep. Okay. And did you have any other questions, uh, Councillor? Uh, no, I didn't. Thanks. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to look around the room one more time. Any other members of the committee would like to address this? Okay. So please be advised that a technical report is being considered by committee this evening and that a recommendation report will be forthcoming at a future council and or committee meeting. Please be advised that once committee and or council has made a decision with respect to a zoning bylaw amendment and if approved by council, a notice of their passing will be circulated with an appeal period. If you wish to be notified of council's decision, please ensure that you email the township clerk, Joanne Shime at jshimei at westlincoln.ca. Anyone who is interested in observing council and or committee meeting discussions about a particular bylaw should not solely rely on mail notices, thus miss the opportunity to attend an applicable meeting. It is suggested that you watch a township website for postings of agendas to review items that will be discussed at council and or committee meetings. The agendas for meetings are posted on the township website after 4 p.m. on Friday prior to the meeting. Additionally, meeting schedules are also noted on the township website for the public to view. If you wish to receive notices by email, it is suggested that you contact the township clerk to advise of your request and include your email address along with your mailing address and your phone number um, so you don't miss that opportunity. Um, so at this point, this public meeting with respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is concluded at the hour of 7.08 p.m. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the next subject, which is change in order of items on the agenda. Looking around committee here, is there any items on the agenda that we'd like to change the order of? Not seeing any, we have no appointments tonight. So now we're at request to address items on the agenda, section 13 or 10.13, five and six general rules. One hour in total shall be allocated for this section of the agenda and each individual person shall be provided with approximately five minutes to address their issue. Some exceptions may apply and I'll determine those within the moment. Um, a response may be provided and the matter may be referred to staff. A person who wishes to discuss a planning application or a matter that can be appealed will be permitted to speak for upwards of 10 minutes. Um, so at this point, I'm gonna ask members of committee with your virtual hands, um, if you would like to address any item on the agenda. So Laura, I know you were you brought one up before, uh, this would be the appropriate time to uh, address that particular item. I'll just give people a couple of minutes. So Laura, I'm gonna permit you to, yeah, so you can unmute whenever you're ready. What's going on here? Let's see if that. There we go. Did that work? So, yes. And so again, I'm going to ask you to state your name and your address again, just so we're doing it, you know, properly here again this time. For sure. Laura Thompson and 48 Sarah Crescent. Excellent. Thank you, Laura. Okay. And then is it obvious what item on the agenda this is in regard to? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I'll, I'll mention, I think it's 11.1. Hold on. Let me just confirm. Um, no yeah, problem. It's, 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 yeah, it's, so it's just for the record, it's 11.1 .1 recommendation report, P uh, by developments, Inc. Station Metals West draft plan of subdivision and rezoning file number 2089-19. So there you go. I got that on the record. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. So the, the only comments that I had was that I saw in the PDF um, that the, our subdivision wouldn't be used in terms of construction um, passageway. So any construction vehicles driving through the current subdivision. So that's great. I just wanted to check if there's any way um, to make sure that that's enforced or to make sure that that is followed through. Um, and then the other comment I had was on the, let me just check the name of it here. Um, it was a previous plan. The Northwest Quadrant Secondary Plan, there was mention of sustainability um, in regards to the, the new development. And the, it mentions some ideas of sustainability or examples, but um, I could have missed it, but I haven't really seen anything in the proposed 
plan and, and maybe it comes later of what actual metrics are used or how that's quantified or um, recorded. So that was just something that I wanted to bring attention to, to see um, what exactly that looks like in terms of that plan and how it's noted to see if, if that is implemented or how it's implemented. Um, but those are the, the only two points that I had. Okay, so I'll go to the, the director of planning to see if there's if we have a response for those uh, that he can address or even to our, our planner number two there, either or. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, I can certainly start. With respect to the issue of um, construction vehicles and, uh, and their direction of, of traffic flow at the time of uh, developing a new development, uh, we can build into the subdivision agreement uh, into the written wording of the agreement, language around uh, the location of such vehicles and, and where truck, truck routes should be. Uh, if we work with uh, Township Public Works staff, we can certainly identify truck routes and then build those into the um, build those into the agreement so that um, access through the development uh, would only be permitted if it was allowed in that agreement. So that would be number one. Uh, with respect to the issue of, of sustainability, um, I would suggest perhaps Oz might be able to speak to that at some point tonight. I believe he should uh, uh, provide a couple of comments. Um, staff have reviewed it and are satisfied with the proposal as presented. Um, it's not an exact black and white science where there is a series of boxes that have to be checked. So it's a bit of a an evaluation process that staff undertake at the time of each application that comes forward as to whether or not it meets the, the criteria, one of which is sustainability. So um, hopefully that does for now, Mr. Chair. Excellent, uh, does that answer your question, Laura? Yeah, yeah, it sounds like it's a little bit more of to, to come or to see how those um, different aspects of sustainability are incorporated, but for now it's just kind of high level mentioned and it'll then be brought in. I think that's my understanding, if that's right. Yes, I believe you're correct. Okay. Excellent. Awesome, all right, that's everything for me, thank you. Thank you. All right, so I have next, I have Andrea. So again, Andrea, if you could just state your name and your address, and then you can be permitted to speak. Hi, can you hear me? I can. Perfect. Um, I'm Andrea Ballard, and I live at 33 Lass Road. Um, so uh, my, my comment again is um, related to this bud um, development. So um, in the documents that were sent out with the update to um, to the agreement, um, there was a statement in there just about the berm um, that's in um, the back of my property, as well as I think 29, 31 and 35 last road. And um, the developer said that um, flattening the berm was not part of the, um, the revision to the plan, but that if residents were interested in flattening the berm that they could contact the builder. So I did do that. And he said that as long as all four residences that the berm was um, in their property were agreeable to it flattening that, that that could um, be explored. So I just wanted to, I guess, um, make sure that that um, would be true and um, just make sure that all the residences um, whose homes are affected by that berm are um, know about that um, so that it's um, an option for us. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I, I definitely don't think there's anything we can do on our end. I think that uh, you would have to talk to the other homeowners, make sure that they were on board with that. And if the, you know, if they were all on board, then it sounds like you've already been able to um, deal with that matter yourself directly with the developer, which is a win-win. So um, yeah. Okay. Thank so, is there you. any other questions or comments? Sorry. No, that's it. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Andrea. Oops. I tried to mute, but wrong thing. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the gallery here, um, ask if anybody else has any, if they'd like to address any other items on the agenda. Again, all you have to do is click the raise your hand. If not, I will move forward. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna move forward. I don't see any other hands or any other, uh, anything, perfect, okay. So that being the case, 
Uh, we're going to move forward to consent agenda items. Um, all items listed below are considered to be routine and non-controversial and can be approved by one resolution. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless a council member requests it. Mr. Chair? Yep. I'm sorry to interrupt. There actually are a couple more um, oh. individuals who need to speak sorry. To during are this you, session. You're going to read into the record? Yes. So, no, not me, but I believe Oz and Paul are going to be speaking during this oh. time as well. All right. I did not see their hands. So let me bring that back up here. Is uh, you can see you can see Oz right on the screen. I don't know. If you can Apologies. See. Oh, he's right I, there. Sorry, yeah. guys. Okay, sorry, Oz. It's uh -huh. okay. I wasn't sure if I was allowed to speak at that point or if you were waiting for everyone else and then you wanted me to go through. My apologies. It's okay. No problem. So Am I okay to? Okay, yes. I'm gonna. If it's okay, I'd like to share my screen. Okay, so I was just to stay consistent with everything. If you, for those who might not know, for whatever reason, you can just state your name. Um, and I, if you're not part of the community, you can just state who you're here on behalf of. Sure. Um, my name is Oz Kamal. I'm with MHBC Planning. I'm here for item 11.1, .1, the Peter Bud subdivision. Excellent. Thank you. Should I be mentioning my name since I'll be chiming yes. in also? I'm, I'm, uh, go ahead, Paul. Thanks. Yeah, and I'm Paul Hekimovic from the ODAN Tech Group. Uh, we're civil engineers for Peter Bud, and I'll be uh, speaking about one of the slides on this little show that Oz has been put in. Sorry, can you guys see my screen right now? Yes. Can you see Station Meadows, the air photo? Oh, I see the word think. There, now? There. Yep, I, 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 I can never get the split screen thing right, so I do apologize in advance. Oh, no worries. Um, so a, a, as I mentioned, I'm Oz Kamal with MHBC Planning here um, for item 11.1, .1, the Peter Bud subdivision. So um, Paul and I are going to go through uh, just a quick overview of what was presented to the residents and then we heard their comments and our response to the comments because we did make some, uh, I feel, pretty um, substantial shifts to help address some of the comments that we heard. So what you're going to see is prior, the subdivision prior, and then the subdivision current. On your left is the prior design, and then on the right is the current design. Um, the first thing I wanted to highlight was the... Um, the, the apartment building that we were proposing with dwelling units within it. Originally, we were proposing it in the southeast corner of the site and then abutting the park. Um, based on the commentary that we got in October from the uh, public meeting, um, it was um, overwhelmingly clear that that was not the correct location for that uh, building. So what we did is we moved that building as requested along with some additional density for the townhouses over to the west side. So you can see um, where the circle on the left was the apartment building now is where the apartment building is on the right hand side. So it's just sh uh, sh south of Street F off of Grimsby Road, uh, South Grimsby Road. And further to that, what we ended up doing was um, further to the comments that we received from the public, instead of um, they had asked why couldn't their backyards be aligned with single detached dwelling backyards. So we went ahead and we did that. We implemented that. So you have here now a continuation. So the entire east side is single detached dwellings. In doing that, we had to shift the alignment of street G. Um, you can see the cul-de-sac got adjusted and then the park space flipped to the other side. So now you have the um, park space just to the west side. And I believe we made it a little bit bigger. I think it was just under a it was about a hectare before and now it's 1.04 hectare. So the park size increased. Um, and in doing this, what I can tell you is the, um, we were able to still maintain the overall density of 30 units per hectare um, and, and then uh, making sure that we're meeting the low density um, designation requirements for density or not exceeding the, the, the upper limit of that and not exceeding the upper limit of the medium density. Oh, sorry. Um, the, trans there you go. <laughs> um, transportation and access was another item that was um, brought up and was a concern. So the main concern being that there was no proposed east-west connection um, on the north side, the Spring Creek Drive extension, if you will. What we, um, again, having heard the commentary, including staff's commentary about it, um, we decided that we will build this leg of the Spring Creek Drive extension. Uh, to South Grimsby Road 5, and we um, understand that the town will then continue that extension across the north end of the existing 
um, subdivision to the east of us. And then what we've proposed is two access points. Um, you can see them highlighted in red, uh, one on the west side, one on the east side, connecting to that future Spring Creek Drive extension. Again, to help alleviate the um, traffic that we heard from the residents um, with, with I, I, that was another adjustment that we made. The, the other thing, uh, Paul, if you could speak to this, this is the drainage improvements. Yep. So what we have on the left side here is the existing conditions, which is there is a lot of mention about uh, the rear yards of the subdivision of the existing station metals experiencing quite a bit of drainage coming in from the west. And you can see in blue, it's highlighted the area that's actually coming and that's about 13 hectares. And this is why those homes are experiencing some of that, uh, that some pooling of water behind their homes, because it's just trying to make its way to those rear yard catch basins. In the proposed development, what we're actually doing is proposing to expand the existing pond that's on the south side of existing station metals there off Hornack Road and increase the size, increase the volume. And actually they're highlighted in red would be a 100 year storm sewer, which would be below grade interconnected with all the storm sewers within the road. And that's going to capture all the drainage from the north area there, including the area that was draining overland before, into bring it into the storm sewers and convey it to the pond directly. So this is essentially diverting it the those flows around existing station metals. And the areas that are experiencing the, the, uh, the drainage issues behind their homes, that area is going to be significantly reduced now because the it's only going to be uh, reduced to a, basically the localized areas between uh, the north south road where we believe is street B and the subdivision It's just going to have your rear yard catch basins there to convey the water to that 100 year pipe and bring it to the pond. So that is a, it's a major improvement in terms of drainage for for those residences. Sorry, I was on mute because my dogs were barking. <laughs> what I also have is um, what we've also done is some concept massing just to um, give council a little bit of a flavor for how um, you can see the subdivision, how it'll look with the park, the road alignment, and how we've moved the uh, density to the west side. Um, and then we just have a couple of, uh, just a couple of perspectives of that, just so you can see how that'll look. This is a view northward. So you can see here lining the single detached houses and then also along the north end uh, at Spring Creek, double so that you have frontage on Spring Creek as well as internal. And then we have various forms of townhouses internal to the site um, and then the, um, the, the, the dedicated apartment building over on the west side as requested. And then this is just another view southward um, of the same perspective, um, looking at it uh, the same place. Uh, the, the other thing I did take notes uh, from some of the comments in terms of sustainability, I, I think one of the important things to keep in mind is we've eliminated the, like sustainability is, comes in different forms. One, one of the big things here is that we're dedicating a park um, there's like a big park here that's going to be, uh, we've dedicated a lot of space towards a park space here for not just the residents of this community, but also the residents of the uh, existing subdivision. Um, another main thing to keep in mind is there is that trail system that is going to be continued along the south side. You can kind of see the, the path of the trail. Uh, there's a berm for the rail and then there's a trail path that's going to continue. Um, that was a, that was a, 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 a big request that was re that was um, asked for in order to ensure that that was being maintained. Um, in terms of other sustainable features, I think one of the big things to keep in mind is the elimination of an additional storm pond is, is in itself a sustainable thing. Um, what we're doing is um, we've determined that you can utilize the existing pond and in, in, in doing that you, you minimize um, maintenance costs and um, having two ponds for maintaining and, and things of that nature. Um, in terms of the actual houses themselves, in terms of sustainability, um, I mean, that'll be determined later once uh, construction happens, but typically you do see, uh, you know, um, sustainable features within the houses, like uh, taps and, and toilets and things of that nature, but that comes later on um, through construction. Um, that's pretty much the presentation. I just wanted to give a high level overview. I know we only had five minutes. I hope I didn't go over my allotment, but I do appreciate um, council's indulgence. Thank you. No problem. All right. So we're going to move forward to consent items. Um, perfect. You took that down. All right. So all items listed below are considered to be routine and non-controversial and can be 
approved by one resolution. There's no separate discussion on these items unless a council member requests it, in which case it will be removed from the consent resolution and considered immediately following the adoption of the remaining consent items. So the recommendation is that items one and two be and are hereby received for information and items three, four, five, and six be and are hereby received and the recommendations contained therein be adopted with the exception of item numbers and there currently aren't any. So I'm gonna read the items that are before us. So item one is technical report PD 54 2021 applica uh, application for zoning bylaw amendment 6696 Canberra Road, Carlton. And oh my goodness, I'm gonna take a stab at this. Cal Mucana Boat Nova. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. <laughs> File number 1601-00621. Two information report PD 58 2021 Environmental Registry of Ontario, posting 019-2811 regarding MMAH and the authority to zone property in Ontario by issuing a ministerial zoning bylaw order. Uh, three, recommendation report PD 55 2021 site, a site plan approval authorization of 103 McMurchie Lane. Recommendation four, or sorry, number four, recommendation report PD 59 2021 Riverview Poultry Site Plan Amendment authorizing bylaw file number 2100 009 21. Five is recommendation report PD 56 2021. 167 St. Catherine Street draft plan of condominium extension approval file number 2100-08617. And finally, six recommendation report PD 60 2021, a street naming of Griffin Street as Griffin Street North, Regional Road 20, and Griffin Street South, Regional Road 14. If I can get a mover. We got Councillor Trembetta and Councillor Ganan. Before I call the question, is there any, any items you want to pull? Not seeing any. Oh, I see Councillor Rayner. Go ahead. Uh, poll number one, please. All right. Number one's polled. So we are voting on two, three, four, five, and six. Not seeing anybody else. So I'll call the question. All those in favor? Okay. That uh, passes. That carries. Okay. So now we have item one. Um, I have Councillor Rayner moving it. Can I get a seconder? I have Mayor Bilsma. Councillor Rayner, did you want to speak to this? Yes. This is a report we just discussed previously, correct? That's correct. This is a technical, a technical report. A technical report is normally approved anyways, because it's just a technical report. Yes. Um, however, um, I think that last name is pronounced Kilmukanova. Possibly. It's a tongue twister uh, for myself. It, it doesn't, you know, it sounds a little Hawaiian because I'm used to seeing Hawaiian. A lot of K's, a lot of A's, a lot of L's in Hawaii. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, I just have a concern with this as the fact that uh, that the requirements are 10 hectares, this is eight. The neighbor has some concerns uh, and has voiced some concerns. And also there has been concerns issued by every um, outlet that we've sent for their comments. So this is this is kind of a lot more than it's a simple process and we're just changing the, the boundaries and everything will be fine. So there's a number of things in this that I, that I find concerning. So um, again, it's a technical report, so I mean, Really, it's got to go through. You cannot turn down a technical report. So, um, although I said I would not support it, I obviously have to support a technical report. This will come back for further details down the road, and then we'll deal with it at that time. That's Thank fine. you. Yeah, and just to clarify for the gallery, um, a technical report is basically we're making no decision at this point. We're going to let staff do research, and then when they present present uh, present those findings, at that point, we actually make a decision as a council. So, I'm glad you clarified that uh, that information there. So. Anyways, uh, any other members of council wish to speak to this? Not seeing any, I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor? All right, that carries, that passes unanimously. All right, so we're gonna move to communications. I see you got the lengthy reads tonight. So item P5921, Chandra Sharma, CAO, Secretary, Treasurer, Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority, MPCA, re and uh, Growing Canada's Forest 2 Billion Trees Funding Initiative Request for Information. And the recommendation is that the correspondence received from the Niagara the MPCA regarding 2 billion trees, Growing Canada's Forest Request for Information, RFI attached as an Appendix A, be received and supported, and that the Township forwards a letter of support to the MPCA prior to ratification of Council in order to ensure that the MPCA is advised prior to the deadline of May 21st, 2021, and that the following resolution be and is hereby adopted. I will read the 
what will be adopted. Whereas the federal government has announced the Growing Canada's Forest Program as part of its Two Billion Trees Initiative, making substantial matching funding available to support forestation efforts across the country. Whereas it, this is a timely opportunity to attract federal investment towards implementing na nature-based climate solutions in our communities through a strong and coordinated multi-partner approach across the Niagara Peninsula watershed. Whereas the uh, Niagara Pen uh, Peninsula Conservation Authority, MPCA, is convening partners and collaborators towards a 10-year planning program for a request of, uh, for information submission and application to growing Canada's forest funding program due to May, or due May 27th, 2021. Halfway there. Uh, whereas the MPCA has a well-established track record of reforestation with private and public landowners, non-governmental organizations, nature clubs, academic institute, uh, institutions, and community groups, has a scientific know-how to identify land and tree species with the biggest ecological and climate benefits and has partnerships in place to mobilize volunteers to plant and monitor trees. And whereas the proposed opportunity aligns with the municipal objectives, has the potential to provide uh, multi-scale benefits it is recommended that council endorse um, the attached letter in support of NPCA's request for information submission in application to Growing Canada's Forest Two Billion Trees Initiative, and further to that, that staff continue to collaborate with the NPCA and other uh, part, uh, sorry other partners in identifying planting opportunities and programs aligned with the municipal priorities to be included in the full funding application should the request for information submission at an expression of interest be successful. All right, so do I have a move? I have Mayor Bilsma moving it. I have Councilor Ganan seconding it. I'll open it up for questions. I have Mayor Bilsma. So yeah, thank you. Just wanted to uh, uh, express my uh, support of this. Uh, I think uh, planting trees solves a lot of problems very, very uh, beautifully. So I'm always in favor of planting more trees. Myself, personally, I've uh, uh, planted about 180,000 trees up north and, and I've always been an um, uh, avid tree planter even around my own yard and stuff like that. Uh, I feel that this is the, uh, it's the solution. So anyways, uh, in support. Thanks. Okay, I have Councillor Rayner, then Councillor Yonker. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I only have one concern, and it says the federal government has announced a growing Canada forest program for its two billion trees. Um, it's probably the same federal government that originally ordered the vaccine for the COVID from China and then realized China wouldn't give it to us. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned uh, with that, and uh, also the fact that they poured the airplanes full of people into Canada to contaminate everybody didn't stop it. So I'm wondering, are they ordering elm and ash trees? Uh, I'm just not confident that the federal government is gonna get the right trees in. Is there any way to know, based on their track record lately, which isn't the greatest, um, what trees do they plan on bringing in here? Because I'm sure they can get these two varieties at a real discount, but, um, you know, what's going to go in? I don't see any of that information be uh, provided to us. I'll go to our CEO because she has her hand up, but. Thank you. Um, through you, Chair Riley, to Councillor Rayner. Um, th the reason why the, the Conservation Authority is putting this forward is because they understand our, um, our land, our requirements for trees. I don't think that this is a program where the federal government is going to be ordering two billion trees and then sending them out to different areas. It's a, a program where there will be partnerships between um, the conservation authorities, the local um, groups, as, as is spelled out in the resolution here. So I, I, I hope that can uh, appease your, your concern um, that, because I, I know that our local conservation authority would work with each of the partners to make sure that the right native trees would be planted and, and would survive so that this would be a successful program. Um, Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yep, you have another question. Uh, I, I agree with the CAO and I'm hoping, but just the track record the last year has not been the greatest. So I just had some concerns based on, based on that, but I'm hoping with other parties involved and them not doing this on their own, that the, uh, that the right things will be, the right decisions will be made and the proper trees will go in. And I, I appreciate the fact the Niagara Peninsula Conservation Authority is involved in it because I'm sure they're going to ensure that things are done properly because it'd be pretty foolish to put in trees that you know do not have a long lifespan. So um, that's that's good. Um, I think it's the right thing to do. I agree with the mayor. I'm always for planting trees. I think it's great. The only trouble is uh, now we have gypsy moths. So uh, now what's the next one? Uh, 
uh, that's going to be attacked. Uh, gypsy moths go after oak trees, and their next favorite one is willow, and after that it's maple. So what native trees do you plant in Ontario right now that's actually safe? I mean, the, the, the ash tree, it was the emerald boar that came from the U.S., the elm tree, it came from, from, supposedly came from Holland after the Second World War, when they immigrated to Canada. It was in, it was in their, their big chest, their wooden chests, and that's apparently how it got to Canada. Uh, and now we've got a particular problem with gypsy moss that, that are attacking practically everything. So I really wonder what trees now are safe that, that based on science, have a probability of getting to 50, 60, 80 years without being wiped out. It, it's, not, it's not a comfortable, if you're a, a lover of trees, which I hope most people are, because without them, you wouldn't live. They convert carbon dioxide to oxygen, and without them, humans wouldn't live. Um, but they're being attacked on all fronts. And, and it really is scary to me what varieties are really safe on the long term to be planting. And I don't even know if anybody's got an answer to that now. Okay, well. Thank you for that, and thank you for the history lesson. I'm going to go to Councilor Young. Anytime, Mr. Chair, anytime. Yeah, basically, um, just a couple questions, and, and same thing. Uh, something like this is a, an exciting uh, program. Two billion trees, I, I think, would be across Canada. And basically, from what I understand, is we have a good organization here that wants to say, hey, we're interested in some trees. If I understand this correctly, maybe somebody can clarify that for me. And then also just um, how this works, if it's people can apply to get trees or through, the, through this, or is it just something that the uh, NPCA would organize in the region and, and where they would, the trees would go, I guess, is kind of what I'm asking. Okay. And um, yeah, that uh, the public would be able to get a hold of a, a few trees for their property or something like that. That's kind of what, a, what I'm, I'm, if anybody could answer that or not, I'm not sure. I, I, I'll, I'll go to, uh, I don't know, actually, maybe our CEO, but from my understanding, I have a feeling they're going to work with the township to identify areas where the, the planting of the trees would be best suited. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be open. Maybe it will be. Uh, maybe they're still trying to figure out some of that. So I don't know. Madam CEO, are you able to um, give any in, uh, insight on that? Yes, I, I would suggest that there's there a lot of detail that still has to be worked out. And um, what they're going to be asking um, some of the municipalities is if, if if we have a tree planting program, then we would put that forward and then that could potentially be matched. And then in terms of good forest management um, and finding the right trees, I think what we're really learning is that you have to have a real variety so that you can, you can your forest uh, cover can, can sustain all the different um, sorts of challenges it gets placed upon it. So we don't do ash trees along the streets anymore we do a complete mix so that we always have some some good coverage that was to try to answer both of those questions at the same time thank you any other members of council committee oh mayor bilsma yeah i was just going to add uh or just going to do a little follow-up to uh, council rain cloud over there um <laughs> it you know uh trees are are Trees are like people, they're, they're, they're quite resilient. They are, you know, they do have diseases. Uh, that's a fact of life. Um, but if, if for those who uh, regularly walk in the bush, uh, you will find um, elm trees, you will find ash trees. They, uh, they do form uh, uh, over time and, and through sheer tenacity um, uh, form uh, uh, resistance. Uh, gypsy moth is taking a beating on the oak trees this year, but it's cyclical and, and the other years that uh, elk trees grow very, very well. Um, and so um, nature finds a way. Um, I have a very vigorous uh, bush. Uh, sometimes it's the beech trees. Uh, beech scale uh, takes a toll and then the beech trees do grow again from root sprouts. Um, it is the uh, course of nature to uh, have that constant struggle and tension between uh, disease and, and pests and, and, and years of growth. Um, so, um, you know, some of the things that the councillor said are absolutely true, but um, the, it's not all doom and gloom. And, and again, so I'm in support of the, uh, the, the tree initiative. I know that the uh, NPC also has access to uh, Dutch elm disease resistant elm trees and uh, ash trees. Not all the ash trees are eaten by emerald ash borer. Some uh, the blue ash and some of the other ones are, are uh, more, uh, a lot more resistant. And, um, and so uh, they have all the expertise and wisdom. I know um, um, the uh, forester there 
um, a, a man that's been in the region for a very, very long time. He's even uh, surveyed my own uh, uh, bush as well. Um, and uh, they, they, uh, they, have, they run a good program. They're the experts. I have no, uh, no doubt that they will find appropriate trees for West Lincoln and a different set of appropriate trees for Fawn Hill and Niagara and the Lake as the soil conditions allow. So just, uh, it's, uh, it's an exciting program. I don't think it's money uh, wasted, it's money well spent. And um, I'm looking forward to however they unfold that. Uh, participating will be, of course, um, anything that the NPCA will put out, uh, we'll be sure to uh, pass along or highlight. So that's all, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. I have a note here, Councillor Yonker uh, just stepped away for a moment to go to the washroom. So um, I'm going to see if there's any other members of uh, council that want to just uh, talk to this. Sorry, Council Rayner, did you say something? Yeah, I said that was a good history lesson too. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Perfect. Everyone's learning tonight. Great. All right. Just keeping the moving and the meeting moving. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Perfect. And oppose? Not hearing any. That carries. All right. So let me just see where we're at here. I just scroll ahead. Okay. So that was communications. So now we're moving forward to the staff reports. So I have 11.1 uh, .1, item P60 21 planning to Gary Borma and Director of Planning Brian Treble. Uh, re recommendation report P by Development Inc. Station Metals West draft plan of subdivision rezoning file number 208919. Recommenda uh, sorry, recommendation that report PD 53 2021 regarding P by Development draft plan of subdivision and rezoning file number 208919 dated May 10th 2021 be received and that section 3417 of the Planning Act apply and that no further public meeting is required and that the application for the zoning bylaw amendment 16012119 submitted by P by Development Inc. and as revised in their latest submission be approved and that the corresponding bylaw be passed and that the draft plan of subdivision file number 2100089, sorry, 1-9 be approved as per attachment one in accordance with the provision of the Planning Act RSO 1990 chapter P13 and regulations thereunder subject to conditions contained in attachment number five to this report PD 53 2021 and that this the applicant be advised that the township draft approval of this plan of subdivision will lapse three years from the date of draft approval unless the township council grants an extension of the approval period. If an extension is requested, an update review will occur and revisions to the, con to the conditions of the draft plan approval may be necessary at that time. And that staff be authorized to circulate the notice of decision for the draft plan of subdivision and corresponding 20 day appeal period. So I need a mover. Got Mayor Bilsma and I got Councillor Ganan. Um, open to questions. That Mayor Bilsma is going first, and Councillor Ganan. Yeah, thank you. Um, so um, I, I was very pleased to see some of the grave concerns that, that were expressed by residents um, by this council um, addressed. Um, so I, I appreciate with the willingness to to listen and to uh, make adjustments. Um, I, I think overall we have a much better plan, and so I'm pleased with the uh, with that movement. So that's all, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll go to Councillor Ganan and then Councillor Bradrick. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have a couple of things. One, also, I was really pleased to see how well the um, applicant and his staff worked with our staff and and really tried to address the very serious concerns that many residents have. So I think the residents should feel that they've been heard and as many things have been adjusted as possible. And I think that's great. Um, I really like the fact that there still is a good variety of housing options at various price points being offered. I think that's really critical as our town grows that we make sure that we have various types. And, and I really feel that that's been addressed quite well. 
And I like, of course, that the apartment building has been moved, but what I really like is that it has a separate entrance to that building um, coming in off of South Grimsby Road 5. Uh, I know one of the concerns was traffic and traffic in and around when that was um, at the back of the subdivision at the far east end would have been quite terrible for the people who live um, on any of those streets leading in and out. Yeah. Now that traffic is more directed to itself. People can come in from the road, um, get into their own parking spot and so on. And the rest of the subdivision will not be affected by that traffic to the same extent. So three highlights that struck me right away when I saw the change in plan. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to go to the director of planning first because I believe from what I saw, there wasn't a separate entrance. I think it's like um, uh, a hammerhead. Yeah, I think you still have to go up and around, but I could have, I could have been wrong in, in how I reviewed that. Um, so I'll go to the director of uh, planning just to verify that information. Through you, Mr. Chair, thank you for asking. Um, Garrett can certainly fill in if I miss any blanks, but uh, right at this particular point in time, we have been given a detailed fabric for what would happen inside condominium developments and, and other things of that nature. But the actual approval right now for those areas is just to make them blocks on the plan. And each of those condominium pieces will come back before this committee for approval separately. So um, Mr. Chair, I guess to directly answer your question, I don't think we have the final plan in front of us. You'll have another chance to deliberate over the proper design of of the condominium pieces of this development later on. Excellent, thank you. I'm gonna to go to Councillor Bradrick. I agree with Mayor Bilsma and Councillor Ganan. It looks like there's a lot of great work that happened uh, to listen to the residents and make those accommodations. I did have a question in regards to the um, expansion of the uh, drainage area, I believe on off of Hornack. Um, you can see in one of the drawings how it does expand and now we'll be going behind uh, some of the residents. So I just wanted to, um, you know, ask the question perhaps to um, one of the representatives from uh, Mr. Bud's uh, organization, if, um, what will be the impact to any of those homeowners that now will have the drainage system in behind their residence? All right, so I guess I can let Oz or Paul, I guess maybe Paul might be the one to speak with. Yeah. So Paul, you're there? Yep, I speak to that. I. I don't see there being any kind of impact to any of those residences backing onto that area. Um, if anything, it might actually be visually better, uh, but essentially the volume in that pond, uh, is, there is ample volume to, to treat the, uh, to provide a necessary quality control for the subdivision and, and retain any kind of water that needs to be retained in there during any kind of larger storm events. Um, so in terms of impacts, I don't see there being any, we're not changing any of the grading at the property line. Any of the high water levels will be maintained within the pond area and will obviously the spill southwards if, when the water does build up. Um, does that answer your question? Councilor yes, thank you. Yeah? Okay. yes, thank you. Okay. Excellent. All right, I'm gonna go back around. Any other members of committee would like to talk to this? If not, all right, I'll make a couple of quick comments here. I, I, I do agree uh, with pretty much everything that I said here. I know when this first came to committee here, there was a lot of concerns specifically related to uh, the, um, uh, I guess the apartment building, a condo building that was be originally being proposed literally in people's backyards there, as well as the drainage was also a number, um, a number one concern of how that was gonna impact them. I'm very happy to myself to see as well as much um, as much improvement as there was, the fact that that building got relocated to the other side in a less impactful way, uh, I thought it was uh, a really a fresh breath of air. If anything, it was a huge giant sigh of relief to not have to um, worry about how that was gonna impact those, uh, I guess, back facing neighbors. Um, and then to be able to see the report even tonight, even further explanation of how the drainage is gonna uh, actually improve that area uh, was definitely also further refreshing to hear. Uh, always gonna be concerns for traffic. I think no matter who we are, we're in a community where you know people like to you know go above the speed limit and we're always gonna be looking at that as our you know director of planning mentioned, this is kind of like the, the blueprint stage or not so much a blueprint, sorry, like a draft stage. And we're gonna be able to address those, I think um, more specifically as we get further into this, but I think overall this was an 
an exceptional uh, transformation of what this originally was. And, uh, and I certainly appreciate all the effort by everyone and including the community as well for really voicing their concerns and having their say. Um, you know, I mean, we can't have it 100% our way, but I feel like, you know, it's rarity, but I feel like we got pretty close to that, you know, that 50-50, that 60-40 threshold, which I don't think we always achieve. So I'm definitely pleased with that. So at this point, I don't see any other questions. Uh, so I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? All right. Opposed? All right. That carries. All right, so we're moving to 11.2, item P6121, Enforcement Officer Tiana Dominic and Director of Planning and Building Brian Treble, Recommendation Report, PD64-2021, Health Canada Open Consultation, requesting a review of cannabis licensing and enforcing, and the recommendation is... That report PD 64 2021 regarding Health Canada open consultation requesting review of cannabis licensing enforcement data May 10th 2021 be received and that Council of the Township of West Lincoln support staff requ uh, request for this report to be sent to the local MP and MPP, the Minister of Agricultural Food and Rural Affairs, the Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food and all other municipalities in Ontario requesting that the federal government enact legislation to better support local governments with land use management enforcement issues as they relate to cannabis production and processing. So if I can get a mover, I have uh, Councillor Yonker and Mayor Bilsma uh, any questions, comments? I have yeah, Councilor Yonker. Yeah, I, I think this is a, a concern that's been in, uh, we've been dealing with for uh, quite a while and uh, Tiana and, and our director have definitely been dealing with it as well. And I just wanted to express, the, yeah, thanks for putting this out there and, and uh, that we're reaching out to the federal government and and saying that there's there's issues here that we need we'd love to use to address and to see that's being coming from staff as well as from us at a couple other meetings a while ago through the regional police it's called teamwork and and uh, good to see that we're we're reaching out to to the federal and provincial governments to uh, try to get this cleaned up so I know there's uh, residents that are going to appreciate this as well there's a lot of concerns frustrations being heard and it's good to see that. Our staff is noticing this as well and, and that it, it gets carried up to the ones that have kind of created the problem. So good to see. Thanks. Thank you. All right, Councillor Rayner. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, Councillor Yonker said kind of was the problem. They were the problem. Uh, they did cause the problem. They failed to do what they were supposed to do. Uh, and every agency, and we've dealt with it for the last couple of years, every agency that's, that's tried from the region uh, to uh, the school board that I asked about, it was in the paper that said we were working closely with Health Canada, only to find that they were not working with Health Canada because Health Canada won't answer the phone. So basically the whole thing has been rammed down our throat uh, with absolutely no follow-up by the federal government whatsoever. They couldn't care less. And um, it's nice to see this, but if it's going back to the federal government, if they haven't listened in the last two years, they don't care about the stink and all the rest of the illegal stuff that's going on. They do nothing to help the police department, although the police have done a number of raids, but a lot of them have not been in this area. They've been in Norfolk or something. I don't know why they can do it there and we can't do it here. But the point is the federal government has not done anything to support the people who have to endure this around their areas from people who are breaking the law. And to expect them to come to the table now when they have an absolute zero track record. Uh, it's wistful thinking. I'd like to be optimistic on this, but the track record is zero. So I'm hoping something happens, but right now the whole thing's been a joke and it's just been rammed down our throat and we've been stuck with it. And yeah, so you're breaking up. So I'd like to find one person that actually got a hold of Health Canada and they actually came out to the site and said, no, that's that's wrong. It's gotta be, it's gotta be resolved. This is not this is not what the permit said. They don't follow up. So I'm hoping this may make a difference, but I, I honestly think it's making us psychologically feel better that we're trying to do something. But in reality, 
I don't I, I like let's Mr. Trouble. Mr. Trouble's gone through so much in this township with what's been going on. I'd love to hear his opinion. Uh, Mr. Treble, do you feel that, that this will help the matter? Do you think it'll wake up the people who haven't been doing their job in the federal government? Do you think we're gonna get some support finally? Uh, or is there anything else you would recommend that can be done that will finally help us? Uh, I mean, it's legal to grow it, but they had guidelines on what they were supposed to do to grow it. And everybody has failed it. And the big guys have failed it really bad. Go past Claire Motors, go on to Fawn Hill and nobody does anything about it. So, Councillor, first, I'm just going to say, like, I think that's a really partly unfair question to ask our director of planning who has, um, he's not involved with this on Health Canada side of things, okay? So, I understand your passion uh, behind this, but I just want to make sure the public, way, well, it came kind of, I, I, I took it that you asked him whether or not it's going to have any specific merit to do this, okay? He doesn't have that, that ability to force them to take every request we get. So I just want to make sure that you might not realize how you're sounding, but that's how it's coming out. So in all due respect to our own staff, I don't think that was necessarily a completely fair question to kind of throw on him. Cause what is, what are you expecting him to say? So anyways, director of planning, well, there is any part of that. I don't know what he's going to expect to say because you will All right, director of planning, you can go forward and explain. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just have a couple of observations, I guess, um, you know, no guarantees with anything, but um, the first is that the, the, the Health Canada group has actually asked for input. So, so that alone to me is, is a good start, a significant start. And, and my understanding is that they are acknowledging that some of the, um, um, the, the uh, what's the word I want? Some of the measures or the amounts of, of cannabis that are allocated per individual are not making sense. And so they're they are doing a review of the, the program. So that's, that's encouraging. Um, the other thing that I can say is encouraging, just knowing that there are other municipalities expressing similar concerns and also actively commenting as part of this process. Uh, you might recall receiving communication a while ago from uh, Debbie or Deborah uh, Francis from down in the uh, uh, Simcoe area, and, and she's been coordinating and, and communicating with all sorts of municipalities from the Windsor area all the way up and through Barrie and just Southern Ontario alone. Um, and, and I have seen a number of comments come through that are of a very similar nature. So hopefully, you know, there's strength in the message and, and we can simply hope that uh, Health Canada picks up on some of the concerns and, and actually makes some changes. Okay, I'll go back to Councillor Rayner. He wants to continue his question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That was a good answer by our director. We gave him an opportunity. He gave us good answers that we expected. You were trumping me before he even had a chance to do that. And that is exactly what I was hoping he was going to say. I wasn't putting him in the spot. And the information he gave was very relevant, very effective, and at least something positive that maybe we can look forward to because it looks like maybe they're starting to listen. And he knew it. He told us. And I believe my questions were correct, sir. Thank you. All right, you're entitled to your opinion on your correction. I don't think it was a fair one, necessarily a completely fair one to ask. So anyways, uh, I'm gonna go back to other members of committee here. If there's any other questions or comments, not seeing any, so I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor? All right, opposed? All right, that carries. All right, so we're uh, item P62-21, Enforcement Officer, uh, Tiana Dominic, Director of Planning and Building, uh, Brian Trell, Recommendation Report, BLDG01-2021, Review of a New Enforcement Bylaw, Non-Parking Administrative Penalty Bylaw. Uh, recommendation that report BLDG 01 2021 regarding rec report review of a new non parking uh, administrative monetary penalty enforcement bylaw uh, data May 10th 2021 be received and that a bylaw be presented at a future council meeting once finalized with legal counsel input and in, sorry in the format found at attachment one to this report so if I can get a mover I got Council Braderick and Council Trombetta any questions or comments? All right, not seeing any, I'll call the question. All those in favor? All right, that carries. All right, item P6321, Enforcement Officer Tiana Dominic and Director of Planning Brian Treble, Technical Report. PD 6121 ATV proposed on uh, road rules for West Lincoln, 
recommendations are that report PD 06121 relating to technical report ATV proposed on road rules for West Lincoln to discuss preparation for a draft bylaw dated May 10th, 2021 be received. And we have some options here. So option one is either that staff be and are hereby authorized to prepare an ATV bylaw with the following features. And those features can include hours of operation on the roads, limit of months of operation, types of road conditions, the speed limit, types of roads permitted to travel on, travel through parkland, travel in or through urban areas, rules of travel and proximity to the public, a blank or that staff be and are hereby authorized to prepare draft bylaw to prohibit the operation of ATVs on all township roads and that staff report back with a draft bylaw for the consideration of the township committee and council after discussions and input from the region and township legal council all in preparation for a public meeting prior to council approval. So if I can get a mover and a seconder, I have Mayor Billsman, Councilor Trumbetta. Uh, I'm good. I, Mayor Bills, maybe before you go, I'll go to you first, but I'm going to go to our director first, just so that he can clearly explain um, what what are really our, our options are here. I think just having a little extra context here might help. So I'll go to Mayor Billsman afterwards and then Councillor Trombetta. But right now, uh, Director, it's your floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll, I'll just be brief, but uh, um, we've talked about this at the committee level already in terms of having to deal with the concept of uh, non- uh, non-roadworthy vehicles on our uh, public roads. And um, staff have done some research uh, around the province. Um, it appears that other municipalities are also doing a similar review, but yet in the Niagara region, um, it seems to only be the uh, township of West Lincoln and the township of Waynefleet that have been uh, put in a position where we have to draft a bylaw if we want to regulate ATVs. Historically, no bylaw meant they were not allowed. Um, so we're in the situation, we've confirmed with legal counsel that in fact, we need to do a bylaw. Uh, the other piece of the puzzle though, that I think is worth putting on the table before you guys deliberate is that it, not only is it the Township of Waynefleet and the Township of West Lincoln that need to work on a bylaw, but the region also is a player in this because of course they have regional roads within the municipalities of West Lincoln and Waynefleet. So discussions that staff have had with the township of Waynefleet and the region uh, suggest that we probably should try to work cooperatively and come up with some sort of a bylaw that's consistent across municipalities. So for, through you, Mr. Chair, for tonight, in some respects, probably all we really need is just some guidance in terms of whether we want to get into a bylaw that regulates or whether we want to get into a bylaw that prohibits. If we prohibit, then the bylaw is fairly easy to write. If we regulate, then my suggestion might be if you've got some guidance with respect to some of the questions, um, feel free to share. Otherwise, uh, staff will sit down at the table with the region and, and the Township of Waynefleet and bring back our thoughts on those various issues so that we can craft the bylaw accordingly. Um, either way, if we go towards a, a bylaw that regulates, uh, there's there's a number of different features that we have to try and figure out. Okay, thank you. So I Mayor Billsma, then Councillor Trumbetta, and then Councillor Rayner. Yeah, so uh, thank you for uh, bringing this forward. And and um, I, I think at this point, um, uh, so, so just kind of considering uh, the scope and magnitude of, of such a bylaw, I, I think at this point, it would probably be best to take baby steps. Uh, we have nothing in place right now. And, and, and I think... Uh, 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 you know, obviously prohibit and, and, and regulate, um, you know, prohibits quite, um, while simple, um, is problematic, you know, uh, ATVs and UTVs and, and, um, um, now that there's a whole range of, of, of equipment, um, they're used for, um, farming applications, um, you know, there's a lot of crossovers, a lot of hybrids, a lot of uh, vehicles that are kind of falling in between the cracks between a quote unquote proper ATV. Um, as far as I know, all of those require some kind of licensing. So we do have problems then if we're interfering with MTO regulations about, you know, like I have a, I have a, an ATV and it's, it's properly um, licensed. And, and uh, as long as I follow the rules of the road as a regular traffic vehicle, uh, my license allows me on that road. 
Um, you know, and we, uh, we acknowledge that we do have problems, uh, with, you know, probably more often or not than with our unopened road allowances, that's probably where our biggest pinch point or intersection with, with problems is going to lie. Um, but again, um, without getting into the new, all the nitty gritty details and the nuances as a general principle, I think we should just ease into this, um, you know, um, uh, uh there is a sense in which we can always tighten up, but if we go too far, we can create a, 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 a lot of challenges and a lot of problems for the municipality. And so I would fa favor an approach that may sound a little bit of minimalistic at first. And then when we see the problems arise uh, or, or potential problems, um, you know, we can address them. But I, I, again, I, I don't think we want to, I don't think we have the resources, nor do we want to be police. We have a lot of things that we need to police, you know, as bylaw uh, enforcement and dirt and we, and and planning and 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 people building without permits and and now you know the COVID <laughs> circumstances, um, you know, ATVs is just another layer. It's an important layer. Not I'm not dismissing it at all, but I'm just saying um, at this point. Um, Let's maybe just kind of address some of that low-hanging fruit that that um, gives us a little bit of teeth and some of those obvious uh, pinch points. So that, in terms of principles, I think that's what you're going for here. I would take a minimalist approach. My that's my opinion, um, and and ease into this, um, and and see where see where it goes. That's that's my comments, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, I'll go to Councilor Trombetta and then Councilor Rayner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in reading this, I, I raised some concerns last time this came through. Uh, I'm not in favor of regulating this. It sort of kind of speak to what the mayor was saying. You know, we are stretched thin for bylaw. You know, Brian, I, uh, Mr. Tra Director, you know, through this municipality on a lot of a lot of things. You know, this is classifying ATVs, but we have golf carts, we have bobcat loaders, we have it all. You know, and. You know, prior to now bylaw being implemented because it's coming down from other municipalities, you know, the MTO, the, the, the NRP can regulate if someone's traveling on on roads or not licensed and they can give the tickets. I think to, to push it on our bylaw, you know, um, again, uh, where, where are the rules going to state that you can't have a souped up golf cart and then that's not classified as an ATV and, you know, that's traveling now and, you know, I just think that this is, uh, they're coming up with so many new, new uh, prototypes of, of equipment these days that what's going to classify into that bylaw? We're going to be consistently changing the bylaw to try to keep up with the times and things getting changed. And I think it's a complete waste of time at this moment. I won't be in favor of supporting uh, a bylaw that restricts uh, ATVs. I think they are uh, under the NRP that can classify if they're driving illegally on a legal property, they can be ticketed through the NRP. Um, I, I don't think that we have to send uh, staff and resources to spend so much money into uh, dealing with this stuff at this moment. Until some more information that can sell me on why it's needed, I will uh, not be supporting it at this time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. And keep in mind too, I, I think if it's worth noting here too, we could probably table this to see what the other municipality and region come up with so that whatever we do, uh, implement if we implement anything at all is uh it's at least consistent uh even for enforcement purposes if there's anything to enforce so anyways just thought i'd throw that out there's a possibility because that might be the best way to come away from this night so i'll go to council rayner then council yonker thank you i'm kind of in the middle of the road between the mayor and uh, councilor trombetta um i think to save a lot of time um mr trouble and his staff um, would be the best people. Uh, Brian's been here a long time. He knows the situation in, in the country, especially uh, where a lot of this is. The mayor did bring up some points on open road allowance. That's a huge one. Um, and and I think would be, we need something to start with and, and to be able to, to go from. So I, I think staff going with the region, going with the other municipality and coming up with some ideas uh, that would be effective, would be a good starting point for us to go on. Um, I agree, it's hard to enforce. Everything out here is hard to enforce. The time you call the police, it's 45 minutes later before they come and everybody's gone. So, I mean, it's it's a very difficult thing out here to do. 
But by the same token, I don't know if we want to have an approach where we have a very easy system, as the mayor says, take it very gently. And then down the road, every time you got a problem, we have to bring this up to council and have everything amended all the time. I don't think we want to go through all that all the time. Uh, it's, I don't want it to be a progressive thing that every six months we have to upgrade it. So I think with Brian's assistance through, through his meetings with, with the, the appropriate people, we can at least have a good solid base to go on and, and something that we can discuss and improve uh, that may be unique to West Lincoln, that's not to the other municipality. Uh, and, and, and also we have to have the region in mind because a lot of our roads out here are region as was mentioned. So um, to me, that's kind of the easiest way to go about it and, and probably the more efficient way to go about it. If anybody else got any suggestions, I'm more than willing to listen. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Yonker. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think the four of us that have spoken so far are all saying, um, are they allowed on the township roads? Yes. Um, and I think I agree with the mayor. We want to basically, I would like to see that, hey, we be basically, if we do need to write a bylaw in, it's, you you, you know, as per the, the guidelines of licensed, um, I, I was looking at, you know, are these, motorized vehicles allowed in on the on the leisure plex no not on the field just like a, a pickup's not allowed to drive on the fields they're just like a, a pickup not allowed to, allowed to drive on the grass in a park so i i think it can be pretty simple um yes they're allowed um the bylaw is that you uh, respect the, the the rules that are in place uh from the uh from your license when they get their license and that it needs to be licensed properly and you you know, you respect the speed limit when it comes to cyclists, children, pedestrians, seniors. That's all going to be already taken care of in the fact that there's a speed limit in those areas. So I think we can keep it pretty simple and and and, and still allow people to enjoy that that that, that form of transportation. And, and there's a lot of people out here in the country that use it. So definitely, you know, I, I think like the, the mayor said, keep it as minimal as possible as a bylaw. Right. So, okay. Um, Council Ganin. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I've been sitting listening to all sides. And of course, that's not something that affects my day to day life the same as it affects others. And, and I fully realize that and recognize that. Um, I do wonder, though, about whether it ever would be possible for um, a made in West Lincoln solution to work when we have so many bordering neighbors, you know, to one side we have Hamilton, the other side we have Grimsby, then we have, you know, Waynefleet, and we have a little bit of Pelham, and we have, you know, we have too many other considerations, you know, because um, people don't just stop as soon as they hit whatever they perceive to be a West Lincoln border. So I'm wondering if it isn't best to let Mr. Treble and staff um, talk to the region, talk to um, the other surrounding municipalities um, that all have countryside and, and come to some kind of a consensus with them about um, what they are doing, if they have something in place, and from there maybe judge what best would work for us. I don't think we're really ready to make that decision tonight. I'm not ready to make that decision tonight. No, and I think I think you're you're spot on with that. That's even when I was mentioning the councilor from that earlier when I said we we kind of table this for staff for now so they have a chance to hear all um, the other input from the other municipality in the region and possibly come back at a later date. We don't necessarily need to set that date right now, and uh, so yeah, I, I completely agree with that. So I'll go to any other. Um, I'll hold on, Councilor Braddock, did you have anything to say? Sorry, I wasn't sure I saw your hand. Okay, I'll go back to Councilor Rayner. Oh, you're on mute, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I think the best thing to do is kind of the old uh, one line that we used to do more often in the past. Thank goodness we don't do it as much in, now as we did before, and that's refer to staff. Okay. Um, so I'll go to the director. Is this a refer to staff, or is this something that you want us to table for now, and then you can come back at a later date? Mr. Chair, I'm not, I'm not sure I really care. It can be referred back to staff. You've given me some guidance, which is what I was looking for. Um, or alternately, just simple, simply table the report until I'm able to bring back more detail. I don't know that it matters to me. Maybe clerks have a preference into, in terms of which we can handle it, but um, your, your voicing of uh, thoughts and opinions was very helpful, and that's what I was looking for. I'll go to our deputy clerk to see which is her preference. So this is a, a technical report. 
Um, and the recommendation, the last point on their recommendation is that staff report back with a draft bylaw. Um, so we can definitely amend that to say that staff will table it and report back to committee at a later date. Okay. Um, again, it's it's up to the director of planning. Really. So, so, I, I hate to go back and forth, but it's up no, to your <laughs> You want to get this right. So if we were to do that, we would keep section one, we remove two in the current three, and we would we would amend it to include the, if we did the table or whatever, and come back at a future date. Is that what you're, excuse me, is that my throat's trying to, is that what you're, uh, you're suggesting? Yeah, so because we are actually removing a pretty big part to the recommendation, I would um, suggest that we put through a amendment okay. to the, to the recommendation. Up. So we would um, okay. uh, say we will have a mover and a seconder for that amendment saying that we will remove section two okay. of the recommendation and then we will have a mover and seconder for the original motion. Okay. Does that make sense? I think so. So we're going to re vote to remove section two. Then we'll do another amendment to include, or are we replacing two with the suggestion of tabling? We will. So we'll remove section two. Okay. And then the last one, it says that staff report back with the draft by law. So they're not going to do that yet. Okay. Um, so I would suggest saying that we remove section three. three to say that staff report back to committee at a future committee date. Okay. Is that okay? So, but just to clarify, do we need to be specific on the, the terminology we use, whether it's tabled or referred? Like, the, is it just one in the same? Um, that is a good question. <laughs> I would say referred back to, okay. to committee, yes. Okay. All right, so let's, I'm gonna have you read the whole resolution and then we'll, um, or the resolution we're making the amendment of, and then I'll get the mover and seconder. And then from there, we'll go back to the original motion. And then I'll ask if there's any other questions just so we can kind of keep it clean right now. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna put it together. I saw that Councillor Tremita had his hand up. I don't know if he was talking to us, but. Yeah, uh, Jason, are you able to wait just till we get this part kind yeah, of? Yeah, that's fine, I'll wait. Come back okay. to me, Mr. Chair. Well, so. Mr. Chair, it was really quick. Does it have to go back to staff? Like, do we have to, and it threw you to Mr. To, to the director, do we have to vote on it going back to staff to get ideas? If we think that myself, who's not in favor of this, and maybe I'm not sure the members of committee are all in favor of it, there might be, it might not, but do we have to get further consultation on this through you to the chair, uh, to the director? Um, through you, Mr. Chair. Uh... I'm not sure that we necessarily have to do anything, but the NRP are asking for us to make it clear to them exactly what our rules are. So um, we need to do a review at a minimum. At the end of the day, we might choose to pass no bylaw. I don't know that we necessarily have to pass one. But okay, so, the, so that, that, that's the question. So the NRP is asking, sorry through you, Mr. Chair, the NRP is asking you to come up with something. And then yeah. at that point, it's okay. Because my thing was, if we didn't want to, move this or pass it, it just dissolves and we don't, still, we don't have to waste staff's time, but if they're, you're getting guidance from the NRP. So as, like, as uh, through you, Mr. Chair, as I understand it, the old rule basically was that they were prohibited, but now because we are in this list, it's kind of weird how this works, but because we're in a list, we now have no rule. So NRP is basically saying it's fair game to do, to have ATVs doing anything, anywhere, anytime, which is, to, to, to Councillor Ganan's point, once you hit the borders, it's prohibited again. It's, it's very weird. So, um, you know, NRP is saying we need to do something. They need some guidance from us. Okay. okay. Great. And then Jessica, sorry, Councillor Yonker, I'll come to you in a second. I just want to take care of this first. Hmm. All right. So I'll let you go forward. Sorry. That's okay. So I would suggest that the amendments say um, that report PD-061-21 ATV pro pro proposed on road rules for West Lincoln 
be amended as follows. One, that report number PD-61-21 relating to the technical report um, be received. So we're receiving this. And that staff report PD-61-21 be referred back to staff and be brought forward at a future committee date. Perfect. So we need a mover and a seconder for that, that entire amendment, right? So I have Mayor Bilsma and Councillor Ganan. Okay, so before I, okay, so once we vote on this, that's done. So I'll go to Councillor Yonker, because he had his hand up before. So go ahead, Councillor. No, yeah, no, you know what, that's fine. I was just going to say, why don't, I, I'm not going to make it complicated, but uh, yeah, let's let's leave it in staff's hands. I think they've heard what we said. I was going to say, why don't we remove this, 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 and that from there, speed limit, road, whatever. But I think the staff understands our, our, our uh, sentiment and uh, can come back with something that's written up clean and, and proper and then we can discuss it a little better. So yeah, leave it as that. I'm good. Perfect. Thank you. And I, I agree. Yeah. I think having wait yeah. to see, you know, even input from the region and how that works um, might be very uh, uh, useful as well. Yeah. You know, last thing we want is to- Yeah, I was kind of, I was kind of uh, just, yeah. I was kind of agreeing with uh, Trembetta that, hey, we can clean this up right now and say, let's do it this way. But I also agree, it makes sense to let staff clean it up and then we, we can discuss it farther. Perfect, thanks. Well, it also gets a little bit complicated yep. if the region goes to pass something else in our municipality and how does that work, right? If we have some areas of the municipality, that's one way with the region, you know, their, their um, uh, responsibility in our municipality could say different. So I think this is wise to go back to staff, let them kind of do more research, not so much more research, but gain more information of insight of what's going to be coming down our way through them. So anyways, oh, yeah. sorry, sorry. I, I just want to, I, I just want us to have that discussion with the region then and kind of have it where we want to say, well, this is what we're hoping to see. Um, roads, listen to the roads, whatever. Like we want to have input into the, to, to, into the rule, not the other way around. It's kind of where I, I, I hope staff understands that too. And I think they do. Yeah. So right? it's a discussion. Staff understands it and also keep in mind uh, some members of you know, um, our regional councilor and our mayor also are part of the public works committee as well. So they would definitely be able to voice that input during that time at the region as well. So, all right, so that being said, not seeing any other hands up. So I will call the question, all those in favor? All right, opposed, all right, that passes unanimously. Okay, so moving forward to uh, 11.5. Councillor Riley, I'm sorry. We just need to have a mover and seconder for the original motion. Oh, right. Sorry. So that was just for the amendment. Um, I thought we were back to the original. So again, so just going back to square one, if I could get a mover and seconder. Uh, so mayor we, had a mover, we had a mover and a seconder for the original motion. So it was uh, the mayor and Councillor Trombetta. Okay. So Councillor Trombetta is still fine with that as a mover. Okay. It's the original motion as amended. That's all you Yes, say. that's correct, sir. All right, so that being the case, I'm seeing the head nods, yes. So all those in favor, perfect, that passes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, no problem. Okay, so we're at item P6421, Planner 1, Meg ah, sorry, Megan Burbick, and Director of Planning and Building, Brian Treble, recommendation report number PD652021, Explornet Communications, Inc. Tower 9257, Regional Road 20, file number 2100, 004-21. And the recommendation is that the report PD 65 2021, data May 10th, 2021, relating to Explornet Communications Tower 9257, Regional Road 20, be received. And that the application for the development of Explornet Communications Tower at 9257, Regional Road 20, submitted by Sarah Duncan, be supported and that staff be and are hereby authorized to send a letter to Explornet Communications Inc. Sir Duncan advising that the Township West Lincoln has no objections to their tower proposal located at 9257 Regional Road 20 and that the above noted letter shall advise, to also advise that the Township West Lincoln expects as a good business partner, Explornet Communications will obtain site plan approval and a building permit from the Township of West Lincoln prior to the construction of the tower and that a bylaw be passed to authorize the mayor and clerk to sign an, uh, an amending site plan agreement with uh, Vukovic Farms Inc. on behalf of Explornet. If I can get a mover and a seconder, I have Councillor uh, Yonker and um, Councillor Rayner. 
Any questions or oh, so I'm gonna go to um, our, Meg, our planner one, Megan Burbick. I think she had a question. I wanted to add some context here. Uh, thank you. Um, just so everyone knows that the recommendation report didn't have regional comments and that's because they submitted them this afternoon. So I'm just going to provide an overview to them as Jessica Dyson sent to you them in hard copy in your email. So regional staff have provided the following comments related to provincial and regional policies. The proposed location of the communication tower is within prime agricultural area and designated as good general agricultural um, in their regional official plan. Identifying further that provincial and regional policies require that agricultural land is a viable asset and must be properly managed and protected. However, regional staff acknowledged that Industry Canada is authorized under the Tele Telecommunications Act to provide the location, to approve the location of the telecommunication tower and are exempt from the jurisdiction of provincial, regional, and local governments. Regional staff have provided the following comments related to archaeological potential. The area of the proposed development exhibits potential for discovery of agricultural resources due to the proximity of registered archaeological sites and due to the presence of water courses within and um, within and on the site of 300 meters. As discussed within the pre-consultation meeting, um, completion of an art Archaeological assessment is recommended given the tower is located on land that hasn't been um, disturbed before. Through the site plan approval process, regional staff will also recommend that an archaeological advisory clause be included. Regional staff have provided the following comments related to regional road allowance. The subject property is situated on regional road 20 or highway 20. Regional staff note that the section of land has a sub, substandard road allowance and the recommended policy width is 300 or 35 meters. Regional staff acknowledge that previous road widening may have been granted in the past. Um, however, they don't believe that the previous road wide, widenings um, satisfy their current regional official plan. Through the site plan approval process, regional staff have recommended a road widening of approximately 3.8 meters of frontage on regional road in order to achieve a 17.5 meter for the legal center line of the original road allowance be added on. Regional staff have provided the following comments related to regional permit requirements. Regional staff acknowledge that no construction is currently proposed on Regional Road. However, if um, anything is done on the Regional Road, a permit will be required. In conclusion, Regional Planning and Development Service staff recognize that Industry Canada is authorized under the Telecommunications Act to approve the location of the telecommunication and the above comments have been provided as information and suggested best practices from the provincial and regional land use planning perspective. Regional staff has no concerns with the proposed explore net communications tower as proposed. And then uh, from the township side, we, with taking in what the region has said, we still believe our current recommendations are appropriate. Thank you, Megan. So after hearing all that, anybody have any questions or comments? I have Councillor Trombetta. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Through you to either Megan or Brian. What, now that the SWIFT program's going through and it's going through that area of Highway 20, probably in conjunction with this tower, what happens to these towers? Obviously SWIFT eventually is gonna take over. Um, like what's the range? Like I understand it's a Wi-Fi tower, I get it, but when Swift takes over, like does that assume to the property owner? Like are these just more towers going up with response like other towers that have been erected in this municipality? What what happens, if you may? Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair. Through you, Mr. Chair. I'm not sure necessarily the planning staff at the township uh have solid answers to that question. Um, 
my understanding is that ExploreNet is attempting to improve their ability to provide service to the area, and this tower is needed for them to improve their level of service. How this gets mixed in with SWIFT, I really don't know the answer to that. I do see, Mr. Chair, that, that Sarah Duncan is still one of the attendees. I don't know if she is able to speak to that in any way or not, but she is the agent for the applicant on this file. So. All right, it's Sarah, if you'd like to speak to this, you can raise your virtual hand and we can bring you over. If not, not a worry. Oh, all right, rise to the occasion, excellent. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Um, through you, Chair. Um, yeah, as the director said, we are building these to expand the network. Um, with the SWIFT program, we are aware of it and are working with uh, all the municipalities that are involved, but if there were additional infrastructure to be put on these towers, there is the opportunity for co-location and should at some time later ExploreNet not require the tower, i.e. fiber could be brought in, you know, along the road or whatnot, then they would be decommissioned. There, there is a clause in our agreements with the landowners that if they aren't used within a certain period of time, they must be decommissioned. And that is also something that some municipalities have put um, as part of the letter of concurrence to Industry Canada that there must be a decommission, um, I guess, a decommission within a certain period of time of the tower not being used. Great. Thank you. That's the answer I was looking for. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Welcome. Any other members of council like to, oh, I got Councilor Ganan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to Mr. Treble. Um, I wish that I'd had a chance to look at the region's comments, um, but I thank Megan for bringing those forward. But does that mean that um, because Mr. Vukovic is having this put on his property that he now has to um, allow an, an additional piece of his property uh, going to the region for the, for road allowance is that like you know I can see when when you're building something and you're making some kind of a difference to your own property but I'm not sure that a tower going up as it does is in that same category but obviously I could be wrong. Through you, Mr. Chair, if I may, and and Megan, feel free to jump in if I miss something. Um, it would appear that the region is saying policy says we need a widening. But then they conclude their letter by basically acknowledging that this isn't your standard site plan process yeah. and therefore um, it's best practice, but we can't really mandate it. And, and, and that is really, in essence, the nature of the whole process. We are able to provide comment. Um, Sarah Duncan is seeking our input so that she can take it with her to Industry Canada as part of a package to Industry Canada, who is the final approval authority. So. Um, the region, like the township, can make suggestions, and uh, but that's all they are, is suggestions. So, okay. so that, that region, makes more sense that on yeah. something of this, where we're just commenting bodies, and the region is a commenting body, and yet it seemed to be a demand sort of inserted there somehow at, at this point in time. So thank you for that clarification. Which, through you, Mr. Chair, I had found it a little odd and I had spoken to the region about their initial concern before they ever put the letter in writing um, because it appears that historically they got us a road widening from the town at the time that a previous severance was done or not from the town, from the property owner prior to the current owner. Mm -hmm. And we're not even dealing with the current owner right now. We're dealing with a, an agent on behalf of ExploreNet who has no ability to be granting or approving uh, road widenings off the, the landowner tenants farm or the, the farm of the person that uh, they're buying or renting from. So anyway, long story short, I think they acknowledge that it really is a best practice, but it's not able to be mandated. And, and likewise with us, we're supporting and suggesting they should sign a site plan agreement and suggesting they should get a building permit, but we can't mandate that either. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. It just, it just seemed odd. I appreciated Megan bringing that information forward, but, but then it seemed to be kind of conflicting. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for pointing that out as well, Ms. Um, Council Ganan. I know I got, I got the email, I forget what time it was, but it was kind of like right to the wire there. And uh, it was a, a big read to kind of throw on at the end there. So thank you, Megan, as well for uh, reading it that for everyone summarizing anyways uh oh councillor rayner 
Yes, Mr. Chair, through to Megan, are, are they supposed to be doing an archaeology, an archaeology, an archaeological study of this? Through the chair, um, like Brian said, that's just a recommendation. Um, they don't have to. They don't, they don't have to. Because it's interesting because I had somebody come by my place uh, a couple of weeks ago and they wanted to go in my field because they were looking for arrowheads. And uh, I thought that was quite interesting. And I said, sure, if you want to go look for arrowheads, go right ahead. But uh, and then this was brought up. And uh, I thought, well, that's interesting. So it's not mandated. Uh, through um, the chair, what the uh, region was saying is they would like it. But like Brian was saying, they can't demand it happen. Um, and also to provide context, they kind of seem to be putting it, that uh, comment on most things. Most of my minor variance applications, they, they seem mm -hmm. to be asking for right. interest in this. Okay, I see um, Sarah actually has her hand up as well. So I don't know if, if I'm understanding this correctly. So Sarah, did you have a comment to contribute with this? Okay, Councillor Mayor. Uh, Sorry, oh, go ahead. Through, through your chair, uh, through the chair. Um, yeah, we are seeing a lot of, as Megan says, the standard clause of archaeological uh, requirements as a suggestion. Yes, we don't have to do an actual archaeological study, but when it is brought to our attention like this, um, ExploreNet will use or sometimes uh, request an archaeologist come out on site and do a stage one, or we might do some preliminary digging, um, either by trowel or small shovel, just to double check because the area we're disturbing is so small. Um, but if anything were to be found, then we would be stopping construction and, and obviously contacting the appropriate people. Mr. Oh, sorry, Director Planning. I, I don't mean to belabor this, Mr. Chair, but just to, add, to put a bit of context on this, if this was a plan, a subdivision or a site plan where there would be a building on the ground and some disturbance of the soil, then it would be a requirement for sure. Um, it's not triggered by solely a building permit. That's the interesting piece. Okay, excellent. All right, any other questions? Not seeing any, I'll call the question. All those in favor? All right, that passes. So we'll move on to 11.6. Uh, P6521, Director of Planning and Building, Brian Treble, Recommendation Report, PD50-2021, Change to Planning Fees to take effect July 1st, 2021. Recommendation is that report, PD50-2021, dated May 10th, 2021, relating to Recommendation Report, Change to Planning Fees to take effect July 1st, 2021, be received on Canada Day. That bylaw 2002-112 committee of adjustment tariff of fees be amended by replacing schedule D tariff of fees with a new schedule D as attached to this report. And that bylaw 2011-28 tariff of fees for planning matters be amended by replacing appendix A schedule fees with a new appendix A as attached to this report and that the new planning fees take effect on July 1st, 2021. Can I get a mover? Mayor Bilsma, seconder, Councilor Ganan, any, oh, I got uh, Councilor Yonker, then Councilor Rayner. No, I was just waving to second that, so. Oh, all right. All good. No okay. comments, no question. Excellent, Councilor Rayner. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through to Mr. Trouble. Uh, Mr. Trouble, was this anticipated in the uh, budget in March? Through you, Mr. Uh, Chair, yes, it was, um, although we anticipate that the change in the actual revenue generated would be fairly small, but yeah, we contemplated a fee increase as part of the budgeting. Okay, so this is just a follow through. Uh, I, I thought maybe, so the numbers were already worked into the budget is basically what I wanted to ask. That would be correct. Yeah, that's good. All right, that's great. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from anyone? Okay, not seeing any, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? And oppose. All right, that carries. Okay. 
Moving to item 117, uh, item P6621, uh, Director of Planning and Building, Brian Treble, Recommendation Report, PD62-2021, Building Fee Bylaw, Review and Building Department, or, yeah, Department Operational Review, Amendment to Budget, Recommendation that report PD62-2021 regarding Recommendation Report, Building Fees, Bylaw Review and Building Department, Operational Review, Amendment to Budget, dated May 10th, 2021, be received and that bylaw be passed to amend the existing bylaw and schedules as found at attachment one to this report and that the building, sorry, and that the permit fees bylaw be reviewed annually and increased each year to cover the cost of processing applications and that council approve a budget amendment of BA 2021-05 to transfer 14,000 from the contingency reserve to fund the building department operational review project to prepare the department for future growth and building permits as a result of growth pressures in West Lincoln and West Niagara. So if I can get a mover. Uh, Council Raderick, seconder, Mayor Bilsma. Any questions or comments? Not seeing or hearing any, so I'm gonna call the question. All those in favor? Uh, oppose? All right, that carries. All right, so we're going to uh, 11.8, item P6721, Director of Planning and Building, Brian Treble, Recommendation Report, PD63-2021, Farm 911, the Emily Project. Recommendation is that report, PD63-2021, regarding Recommendation Report, Farm 911, the Emily Project, dated May 10, 2021, be received, and that the amended Township of West Lincoln Municipal Addressing Policy as found at Attachment 1 to this report be adopted, and that the upon adoption to the so, uh, sorry upon adoption of this addressing policy the Emily project is activated and interest and interested farm landowners can make the applications with the corresponding fee to participate. Can I get a mover? I have Councilor Braderick and uh, Mayor Bilsma. Any questions or comments? Uh, Mayor Bilsma and then Councilor Yonker. Yeah, I think the, um, I think that this is um, very timely and uh, it'll be. Um, Good for the municipality to have um, available to us. So good. Thank you. No further. Councilor Yonker. Yeah, just the same basic comment and, and as well as, as just um, it, it's, it's, it makes sense to make things safer for the farmers out there. They, they work alone even sometimes too, right? So it's, it's one of those things that they can easily communicate with and just also to point out that people that are applying for these signs, it's, it's basically the number is going to be put from what I un understand and, and maybe uh, to, through you to Mr. Treble, the sign will be placed at the entrance to the field. And then, and that's what they go by, correct? Through you, Mr. Chair, that would be correct. And there could be multiple entrances and therefore multiple signs as well. And, and the, the number on the sign would be based on the spacing between the various signs and, and what the number range would be. Excellent. I think that answers Councillor's question. Uh, any other questions, comment? I got Councillor Rayner. Um, yes, um, I understand this a little bit, except that um, we don't have a lot of huge pieces of track of land in West Lincoln. Um, I can understand this in Saskatchewan or something. Um, can, can somebody detail me a little bit more? If you've got if you've got 100 acres and you're on the frontage and you've got three roads going in, you want to put a sign on each one of the entrances. Um, can somebody elaborate on this? Through you, Mr. Chair, I can, I can take a stab at it. Um, I see Mr. Mr. Cosby is actually one of the attendees, and I know he uh, is certainly able to speak to it from the Federation's perspective as well. But my understanding is that uh, there are situations out there where there are various different field entrances, and you might need a sign at each entrance because of the inability to get from one part of the farm to the other part of the farm if you, if you enter by the wrong um, access point off the road. There are also situations through you, Mr. Chair, um, probably more so in the Caster area, actually, where farms go from one concession road to the other concession road. And it might be that a, a number off of concession three road would be better than the homestead address, which is on concession two road or vice versa. So some field entrances on the other road at the, at the other end of the farm might uh, 
be uh, benefiting if there was an address number there as well for the emergency services responders. So there's, there's multiple different situations. I don't think there's any one, any one uh, mold that they all fit into. Each farmer would have to sort of do what makes the most sense on his farm in conjunction with our fire chief. Um, if I may, yeah. Mr. I it's just that I've got three entrances and I'm, my property goes from one concession to another. And I just, I can't see how this works for me. Like, um, you can see my house, you can see my house from either side. I know there's other circ circumstances, I guess. Um, but um, yeah, it's, I just, well, I guess if it's applicable to some places here and there's a use for it, I guess that's fine. But I don't know that there would be a lot of them in West Lincoln. I, Mr. Treble said applicable in Caster. Well, I'm an example well, of one that's, but I, I don't, yeah. I don't. Can I just respond as well? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah, basically, uh, let's say you severed off your, your farmland and you, you uh, off your house and then the farmer buys that land beside you and you don't, that, that field beside you doesn't have a number. So he's not going to give you your house number. So that's what it is. It's, it's basically to replace a house number. And it makes perfect sense. If you're in a field that doesn't have a property number to it, there's a lot of, we, we've been severancing off uh, for that a lot, right? Uh, uh, extra land. So they, the farmer buys a, a property, severances off the house and the barn and has that field now. It doesn't have a number. So now they can apply to get this yellow black number and it's on the on the and the entrance to the building instead of the ambulance coming to that house it goes into the field it's yeah okay. and the presentation that probably okay. made was pretty good it's pretty simple and and, and uh per, pretty self-explanatory that was a, about a couple months ago so good to see this moving forward so yeah just to i guess uh, recap here as well um, I think it's just an extra layer of protection uh, for residents who choose to opt in. This isn't a mandatory thing by any means. I know that it, even in our report, it highlights uh, that, that you know as technology changes, you know more accessible things do become available. Now, obviously, depending on where they are in the community or whatever community implements this, um, they have you know there's what's it, I think I'm reading here what three words is an, an app as well that can also help give a little bit more precision. This is just to help you on those dire moments of, you know, where, um, you know, seconds matter. This is just to help steer the, you know, um, the emergency vehicles into the right direction. And like, you know, Councilor Yonker was saying, if you, if the property lines are not, you know, if the numbering system's different and, you know, based on GPS that can, you know, um, misdirect them in any way, which way this is supposed to help alleviate or prevent that. So I don't think this is a, a bad idea by any capacity. I think it's excellent. And I'm happy to see this came back as quickly as it did, considering how busy our staff is. So Anyways, any other questions or comments before I put it to vote? All right. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Excellent. So that passes unanimously. And sorry, let me went down to a different page there. I think that brings us to remarks, but let me just double check. Okay. So that, uh, that brings us to other business. Uh, so under... P6821, uh, members of committee, other business and matters of informative nature. Anybody have anything to report? Nope, not seeing any. Staff, nothing. All right, I'm gonna go to new business. Anybody have any new business they'd like to uh, present? Excellent, that's great. So at this point, that is the end of the agenda and I'm gonna call it the end of the meeting at the hour of 8.48 p.m. Great. Thank you. Have a good night. Excellent. Have good a good night. night. Take care. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone.